MLB great Solaris. And with 100 years of law enforcement in his blood, Tommy Sedner. It's all things sports, plus cop talk, current events, entertainment, and more. Joined by America's favorite Jersey girl, Robin DeLore. It's the King and the Cop. Now, now, here's Tommy, Jimmy, and Robin. Welcome to the King and the Cop. I'm Tommy Setner, a.k.a. The Cop. And I'm Jim Lairitz. The King, sitting next to me in the studio. And maybe that was a little rude. Maybe it should be ladies first, because Robin Delory, Jersey's favorite girl, is back in New Jersey. How you doing, Robin? I'm good. How are you? I miss you, baby. I miss you, too, honey. Look. What am I looking the, at? The listeners out there, I'm holding up a um, a bobblehead so that I feel close to you. Oh, thank you. Can you see it? <laughs> I can. <laughs> thank you so much. So um, this is our first show. We're really excited, and believe it or not, our our leadoff hitter at 4:30 today will be Wade Boggs, Hall of Famer Wade Boggs, Tampa guy, great Red Sox and uh, World Series uh, partner and winner, Jimmy, in 1996 with you. Yeah, I mean this is a, this is fun. I mean we have to kick off our show here in Tampa, of course on Big Eight Radio, eight twenty a.m. WWBA. Uh, you know what an opportunity that we have here to to be the lead in to the New York Yankees baseball yeah. season coming up here on April seventh, which uh, will begin. You know, will be the four o'clock to six o'clock lead in to all the Yankee games that the uh, they cover here. Which I know Robin's in, just thrilled in South Florida. Well, you know. and she's sporting her Newark Bears hat. The Newark Bears, which if our listeners don't know, was the famous minor league team that. The Yankee owners had Yogi Berra, Newark Bear, famous Jimmy, which you uh, yeah. did the honor of uh, helping me coach that team, and Timmy Raines managed it. And we'll get into that later with our former GM, Mark Skeels, who's going to join us at 530 to talk about a couple things. But we're excited that we would have a Hall of Famer as our first guest. That's pretty cool, Jimmy. And what's a couple memories you have with Wade? Oh, there's all, all kinds of them, especially you know, the biggest one just coming over there in, in 1992, him taking my jersey. He took your number? Yes, he took my number 12. And it was back in the day before guys had started paying guys for their jerseys. I look back on it now, I'm like... You didn't get a watch? Dang it, I could have got a watch or 100 grand or something. I could have got out of that. But but uh, yeah, that was one of them. And then, of course, you know, everybody remembers him for his first World Series champion, New York Yankees, and the big walk that he got in yeah. Game 4 that... Uh, that turned out to be pretty important. But yeah, one of the things that I really love, and we'll talk about this when we have Wade on there, is, is the one thing I liked about it is we sometimes we judge people before we know them. And when Wade Barnes got traded to the New York Yankees, everybody talked about, oh, he's a selfish, he's, he's you know, right. this horrible guy, he's a terrible teammate. And man, he came over, and I'm just glad that we don't judge people that way. Well, at least our locker room didn't at that time. He came over, he fit right in, he became the judge in our kangaroo court. I mean, this guy was you know, was one of our, one of my favorite and best teammates of all, and it's just one of those things that you just sometimes you learn that you might know a persona of somebody from what you hear, but when you meet them, you learn their character, and it can be completely different. And God, you know, you and I both know that exactly. Than anybody, so. You know, it, what's funny is, and I know a few New York cops that worked at the stadium, and, and uh, you know that famous picture of the yeah. cop pulling him up onto the um, horse, and he's riding around, which, by the way, in 1996. That's a famous picture, but well, we, all, gonna, we know who started that dynasty. Yeah, we're uh, going we're, we're to talk about that, too, just because it, the interesting thing about that whole story, and I can't wait to get Wade, Wade to tell how he tells it, about how he did it because he had a fear of horses. Oh, you're kidding. And so he, he didn't want to be safe. Kicked. Yeah, if he was on it. He had a cop there that would allow him to get on. The, and, and, and that was that was one of the stories That's that funny. I heard. I don't know if that. I haven't heard that straight from Wade, but I want to hear how got to ask that, that story. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of opening day for us, um, I guess it's our March Madness. And, and March Madness, baby, except uh, for I'm a little in dejection because my alma mater of Kentucky got beat by St. Pete, which and is that's perfect your lead and that's exactly right. And you should know better. <laughs> you should know better when your people go Jersey. Robin, I, I rumor has it that you were in Italy, which we know it's not a rumor. You were in Italy. Did you pray to St. Peter out there yeah. for them? Because I mean, this team is we're all season ticket holders back home for Seton Hall and. And here you comes know, St. Tommy, Peter's out of Jersey City, man. And wow, how exciting. I'm so They're glad the talk of the that. Go ahead, honey. I'm going to tell you why. I went to see the Pope. Oh, right you did? There you did. St. Peter's Basilica. 
Sunday, every Sunday at 1 p.m., he comes out and he uh, he gives a little mini service. I don't really understand what he said, but uh, what I do know is he's Italian, isn't he? Italian How could you not there. know what he says? He's Italian. Uh, what do you mean? You it it went too said. fast for me. Okay, go um, ahead. So I'm standing there, and it's the most unbelievable thing. And it's so funny that you said that because I was praying. You know, I've never been with the Pope before, and I was praying. And that prayer was that St. Peter's would beat Kentucky in the March Madness Oh, you did game. not. No, I know. Stop it. Uh, but I think I did bring some luck to Jersey. Good. And I have to tell you. Jersey is cranking right now. Everybody is so excited. You you would not believe it. I can't even believe it. And then then and then, then the coach is going to Seton Hall. Well, we don't know Seton that yet. Hall's Hold on, stand by. You're spreading leaving. rumors. You're spreading What's rumors. What's happening? You know, the bottom line is uh, the one announcement that is official. Our coach at Seton Hall went to the University of Maryland, but there's still a vacancy, and it will be until the tournament's over. But that being said, uh, enough of St. Peter's because you're giving Jimmy a headache because. Uh, his Kentucky is usually in the Final Four. And, you know, Jimmy, we were just talking prior to coming on the air uh, about Duke. Yes. And uh, Mike I guess. Shefke, yes. Yeah. And, and how many, what, what did we say, 99 wins in the uh, uh, tournament? 99 guys? wins in the tournament. He just set the record for most wins of 1,200. Uh, and, you know, I was looking at his stats, Tommy, and man, one of the things that I was so impressed with, with is that his record at Duke. He's won over 76% of his games. It's like 1,200 and 367. I mean, it's that's, that's that's an amazing run, especially as you can see how college you know, sports and college basketball is. Uh, 47 years or 45 years, however many years it's, it's been that he's had this run. and Under the tutelage of uh, Bobby Knight, no less, and he's just yeah. surpassed everybody as far as his coaching skills. And, and what would be better story this year for NCAA basketball mm -hmm. than to have him go out as a champion or at least get to the Final Four again? So I, I'm, St. Peter's would be I, a better story, but yeah. good luck to the coach. And, you know. and, and, and my Kentucky, okay. and my Kentucky can, contingent is going to cringe when I say this, but I'm actually rooting for Duke. Um, uh, you're going to cringe because I ordered you a St. Peter's sweatshirt that I'm hopefully you're going to wear on Friday with me and Robin. Because Jimmy's coming to New Jersey. About St. Peter's, uh, I think you stopped that prematurely. Uh, I really think you need to talk a little bit more about that because it's a Cinderella story and yes. everybody loves a Cinderella story. That's true. So tell me, tell me, I didn't even know that there was a college in Jersey City. The famous St. Peter's, I thought, was the great high school, St. Peter's High School. Well, you should but know I, that Jersey girl, uh, Jersey's favorite girl. You should know that, yes, the high school is a prominent high school, but you're right. St. Peter's, Univers the college was a very quiet uh college but uh, i never heard of it well now everybody knows them yep. i mean everybody yeah, I knows know. them. it's exciting you know yeah, it's speaking really exciting what did you do this weekend didn't you go to somewhere with me out here in tampa that mr layritz missed his beloved new york rangers oh uh, yeah. yeah apparently our friend jimmy's a big rangers fan right and he didn't fly in like two days early to come and join us at the at the go thunder yes no, I mean, no there's no thunder hun there's no thunder you have to be the, the thunder hun you have to be the thunder oh the, it's lightning it's in a <laughs> lightning bolt but the tampa thunder bay lightning tampa bay lightning but that's okay I because know it's a tampa bay lightning i was there i know what they're saying is be the thunder oh be the thunder oh uh, they're that's they're saying okay I got yeah you. but I got you. what we were in um th thank you to the lightning but i actually didn't know i thought i was gonna say gold bolts <laughs> yes and i appreciate tampa bay losing to my rangers exactly right uh, oh, I, wait, uh, can i just say something i'm sure jimmy, you can jimmy yes I, I i you know how we always talk about new york fans yep jimmy I can't even explain. My mouth was wide open. It, my jaw dropped to the ground when I was sitting right behind some of these Rangers fans, and I couldn't even believe what was coming out of that. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I can't even repeat it. Yeah, repeat Tommy. It on the radio. Tommy told me the story that he, he knew he was he knew he was at a Ranger game because the New York fan behind him was like yelling and screaming and somebody said to him hey there's kids around here and he said shut the yep. and, yeah yeah it doesn't matter and, and, and you know made a profanity with his hands i said wow you I know mean, we have passion you know up here but oh gosh right you know it wasn't very right we're here in tampa um now and we're happy to be in tampa for half of the month usually and um so it was nice to have the lightning uh nice shirts we had a the, you got a hat it was beautiful and we we're 
but deep down inside, I'm sorry, Tampa. We're we're Ranger people. Uh, yes. Robin's telling me she's a Devils fan. She didn't even realize they're not from New Jersey their whole life. But <laughs> but um, that being said, let's you get know, back to the Sweet Sixteen. There was a lot of yeah, but there was a lot of Ranger fans here, Jimmy. And yes. uh, I don't know that Tampa was ready for them. It's no. unbelievable. But uh, no, yeah. Well, and that's what's going to happen. With I'm sure there's going to be a bigger, bigger following uh, in Houston. Next week, one hundred. Well, a ton of people are making yeah. a trip down to. I know it's not. It's a short trip down to Philadelphia to see St. Peter's, which is nice. Is that's right. Our, yeah, they're right. Okay, we're right in their backyard. So uh, yeah, we're, so we're, that's going to be. Listen, we, the Sweet Sixteen. We got Gonzaga, Arkansas. We got Texas Tech, Duke, UNC, UCLA, St. Pete, and Purdue. Yeah, and then you got Arizona, Houston, Michigan, Villanova, Kansas, Providence, Iowa State, and Miami. Now, the, to me. St. Peter's is amazing. It's a 15th seed. They're, they're in the, the Sweet 16. Right. But more amazing is the matchup between Ohio State and Miami, which yeah, is what, an 11, Miami. How about Miami yesterday? 11 seed and a number 10 seed right. in the Sweet 16. It's just crazy. That that's, screwed up a lot of brackets. Huh? Well, and that's what I love about college basketball. People can tell me what you want about, you know, you know the, the old certain teams are down. College basketball parity is so great right now. I can't wait. I'm working on... This week, trying to get Rex Chapman, another UK boy. That would be great. Yeah, because he, you know, he's he's down there actually following the tournament, doing a lot of TV and radio during the tournament. I'm going to try to get him on our show this week and talk a little bit more about this. Who better than him? Yep. But, you know, last night was funny because I picked Jimmy up at the airport late at night, and here we are, and he's like, I'm starving. I'm like, me too. It's late at night. Every You know, the, the, the virus basically has shut these businesses down. And even though they're back open, they're not open late. So here we are, we're sitting in a um, McDonald's drive through window for 45 minutes. And I'm not exaggerating, right, Jimmy? 45 yes. minutes. And we're watching Arizona TCU. And I'm rooting for TCU because that's my daughter's school. And right, I'm like, right. And he's got it on his phone. And I'm on the Big 8, 82, 820, listening to it. But we there was a five- minute delay so i'm having jimmy turn off his phone we're listening to the radio we're going back and forth tcu they had it man they yeah. had it then once they didn't beat him in the uh, regular scheduled time and went into ot we knew they were in trouble and arizona won but um that would have been another I mean, speaking of story. listening to uh, am 820 yeah um i really i think it's time that we get some callers on our first show with this amazing station 728-518- Oh, eight twenty seven two seven five one eight oh eight twenty. Well, that uh, okay. Uh, wait, uh, I just need to. You, you, I'm so you, sick and tired of being made like I'm the airhead, and not. I totally know I made the mistake. Uh, I don't mean to throw anybody under the bus, but I have proof from Sully. Get on that mic right now. Sully, <laughs> so, she's Sully, right. our producer, Sully, Hi, guys. get yeah. on the mic. Sully, she's she's warming up the bus to run you over right now. Uh oh, what did I do wrong? Sully, look at the text that you just sent me. Oh yeah, and I tell everybody it. the number. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> don't because we're confusing seven, people. Seven two eight. 518 It's 727. Yeah. 518-0820. You know what they say? Uh, no harm, no foul, Sully. Exactly, no harm, no I'm, foul. I'm still getting used to this. Like you guys, I'm an East Coast and, guy. I'm from Long Island. And Robin, and you I'm, already I'm, glad you me didn't, I'm glad you didn't want to throw him under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Don't, don't rob a bank with Robin. Oh, my I, I God. I got to say, to be thrown under the bus by Robin, it's yeah. an honor. Oh. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thank you, Thank so. you so much. Oh. So, guys. Yeah, what? <laughs> what? What do you mean? What? Well, I just wanted to get. I wanted to talk about one thing that was also oh, okay. exciting ahead, here ahead, in Tampa. Ahead, this ahead, Tampa's ahead, had a lot of excitement lately. Yes. Lately, and uh, it's a hot spot right it's now. It's a hot spot, and the PGA was here this past weekend. Valsper, Jimmy, did you see? Um, Mr. Burns defended his title, which is unheard of in a PGA these days with all these guys. You know, it's hard to win yeah. at all. Never mind defend your title. Well, yeah, but it's interesting because this tournament is different, and it it seems like you know. It, 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 Sam Burns won for the second time. He made a 30-foot putt right. plus to, to, to beat Davis Riley. Uh, and, but in, 19, in 2018 and 2019, Paul Casey won back-to-back. -back. 
That's unheard of that two guys within a five to ten year span You're right. win back to back to the same tournament. And I think that's even more amazing. When I was reading it today, I was like, wait a minute. Paul Casey won back to back two in eighteen and nineteen. You know, you and I we love the sport and I'm on the DL the right Masters now. Masters is right along. The Master It's coming up next April fourth to the tenth. Hello, friends. Yes. And I'm <laughs> I'm re- I'm really bummed. I'm I'm so I'm trying to figure out what I can do because April seventh is opening day, Yankees Red Sox. I can't miss that game. No. But Friday they're off, and I'm not sure if I have any work on Saturday. And if I don't, I am going to the Masters on Friday. You're, and wor- Saturday. you're, you're working Friday. You're working with me and Robin. But let's be silent. I can do that from the Masters. All right. Maybe I go <laughs> with you. Maybe I go with you. You know, I never been. No. Nope. It's one of the only uh, events that I I, I haven't. Um, Gone to, and yeah. I always wanted to. I went, Golf's tough to watch, though, boy. I mean, not, walking not, it. Not the Masters. No. no. It, it, you talk like you're Tiger Woods, Tommy. You've yeah. never been there? No, I've never been there. Yeah. Well, I got a hole in one. Robin, I got a hole in one. It's a, it's a, I mean, a Robin, <laughs> Robin, world-class Robin, athlete. It's a bucket list thing, Robin, and, and it's one of those things that, unfortunately, once you send him, you better be prepared because he's going to go back every year, just like I have been doing for the last six yeah, years. Yeah, everybody says One thing about Tommy, you know this already, Jimmy, but our listeners might not he loves to have a he loves to go travel and he loves you know going to wonderful beautiful places so within the first year that i was with him we went to the first trip was sea island georgia and then we went about six months later we went to pebble beach so um, i was under the impression that he was a a world-class professional pga be careful star (laughs) what what I, I, I I'm 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 a I'm a good golfer. I'm a good golfer. What are you saying? Yeah, I play golf. With him. I, right. I'm a good golfer. Wait, I mean, wait what a you, minute. You, uh, Don't get on the defensive. I never said you. Well, the reason a I, it's a sore subject, Pebble Beach, because I paid five hundred dollars just to have you drive in a cart next to me and then have two drinks that were eighty bucks a piece or something. So, <laughs> other no, than that, it was, it, a, it was a gin and tonic. It right. was a double. And when he said it was like sixty dollars. We, were like, so, we laughed, right? How That's cold so was fun. it? Wait, we had my blankets, everything the day that we went out to play. You know, it's we're... so funny you just said that because my wife now plays golf. Right. But the reason she started playing golf is one of my best friends, Mike Walsh, you know, Red Walsh. Sure, sure. And, and his wife, Katie, we were, we were with them in, in uh, what do you call it, Nantucket. And we were, they were talking about this great trip they were going to go on. They were going to go to Scotland. And she's like, there's no way. There's no way we get ready to go to break. Yeah, we're going to break. Oh, but right. we're, we're going to carry that on. Cause yeah, we'll, have that, we'll, we'll start that story on when we get back from break. Awesome. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. All right, guys, I got so to It never ends in the NFL as the Atlanta Falcons have traded quarterback Matt Ryan to the Indianapolis Colts. In return, Atlanta gets a third-round pick in next month's draft. Now, the Falcons said this will have more than $40.5 million of dead money against the cap this year. That's the largest in NFL history. They do clear around about $9 million in cap space by trading him to Indy. Reports had stated that Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield preferred to be traded to the Colts, but the Cleveland Plain dealer said the Browns never got into deep talks with Indy about a deal. Now for the Falcons, who need a starting quarterback, NFL Network says they're expected to go after free agent quarterback Marcus Mariota. Quarterback Jameis Winston signing a two-year deal to return to the New Orleans Saints. It's worth a reported $28 million. Patriots signed tackle Trent Brown to a two-year deal. In college hoops, Murray State head coach Matt McMahon leaving to become the new men's basketball coach at LSU. This is the Big 8. Sports, news, information, and entertainment. 820 WWBA. Here's one you don't want to miss. The first ever baseball, bourbon, and cigars. Friday, March 25th at the Garden of the Ybor City Museum State Park. The Florida Sports Hall of Fame and Tampa Baseball Museum at the Al Lopez House presents an evening to celebrate Tampa's history with baseball legends, cigar rollers, Latin cuisine, and entertainment all included. Lou Pinella and Wade Boggs will host along with many other baseball greats. And there's a special price right now if you log on. Here's the website, flasportshof.org. That's flasportshof.org. Hey guys, C4MH.com, the leaders in low T care. Want you to know that not all low T clinics are the same. C4MH.com has been treating low T for 10 years and offers express treatment with $45 labs and initial exam. 
Most importantly, C4MH.com uses only real pharmaceutical testosterone with pedigree papers required by Florida law and never cheap cut rate compounded testosterone. C4MH.com only treats low T, so no high pressure sales for other medical treatments. No teeth whitening, no weight loss, no hair loss treatments. C4MH.com offers straightforward low T care available with the highest quality meds, friendly staff, and 18 locations from Naples to Wesley Chapel. Plus, every low T treatment comes with a B12 treatment at no extra charge. So, guys, if you want the best low T care, go with the best. Go with the low T leaders at C4MH.com. That's C4MH.com. There's a lot of boring radio stations to listen to in the morning, but we're not one of them. Bubba the Love Sponge, 6 to 10. Our amount of listeners on AM 820 might freak people out. Trust me, a lot of people are tuning in to 820. Big 8. The Big 8. A portion of the upcoming broadcast is brought to you in part by the law firm of Catania and Catania, award-winning personal injury auto and motorcycle accident attorneys, serving Tampa Bay families for over 28 years. Offices Tampa, not attorney spokesman. Now, now, back to the show. The King and the Cop continues. Welcome back to the King and the Cop. You know, Robin and Jimmy, I got to ask you something. Uh, did you have your Caffeina, our water sponsor? Oh, it's just sitting right here. I know you're you drinking it next drinking to me. Drinking it right next to me. It's as good as coffee. Better than coffee. Miss Robin, you had to get up early in the morning today to take that uh, the King, the King that lives with us, the oldest child yet to see another college because he's being recruited. Um, did you drink your Caffeina for your drive? So, uh, no, um, and I, I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, my, my usual routine with caffeine, which I love, is that I have to have my coffee first, my real, like, you know, tasting coffee. Right. And then when I need coffee. caffeine, later on, I like to drink caffeine um, because I don't necessarily want to taste coffee again. That's my routine, but yep. I, I got to be honest with you. Uh, when I left the screen for the viewers, um, I had to get my first coffee of the day. So uh, right now, my day is a little delayed. So I'm drinking my first coffee, and I'll have caffeine maybe a little later. You but know, I love it, especially, especially the black cherry. It's great stuff. Um, we got Wade Boggs coming on in a few minutes, but you, you, you said a little quote there, and I'm in the habit of saying it, and uh, I'll never forget this since we have a little cop part of the show. Um, I was in court one day, and one of the detectives kept on saying, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, yeah. to be honest with you. And finally, the lawyer said, so you've been lying to me up to this point. <laughs> and it blew the whole case. And I, I never forgot that. Never to, never to say, to be honest with you, to be honest with you. And I'm not I'm not picking on you. It just it triggered something from a, a lawyer. And he was yeah, an old timer. It was genius. I love the way he did it. So two things. One, uh, I just need to make it clear you're a very good golfer. And two, I need to hear the rest of the story about Michelle. Yes, go yes. ahead, Jimmy. Yes, I was I was going to explain to it, but then we, of course, we wanted to give our sponsors, Caffeine, a little bit of a, a little shout out because right now, Tommy. Yes. I think I have ten people in the state of California within a five mile radius that live near me that go to my golf club, that go to the tennis club. I, I gave them the drink. One of the biggest concerns of most of them were. They go out and play golf for four or five hours. If they have coffee, they have to find a bathroom three That's or four right. times. The same thing with the woman for tennis. She's like, I, I can't drink coffee before I go play tennis in the morning because then I have to use the restroom. And blah, blah, blah. This is why it's such a great alternative because it, even though it gives you the caffeine, it gives you the lift that you're looking for. And so we have now had probably 50 orders coming in from the Southern California well, area. I know Ron and Joe are listening. I yes. mean, if that ain't a spokesman. For, yes, the, for the drink, ready, let's man. go. I'm I ready. mean, ambassador, spokesman, whatever it is, but yeah. all can decide. Great guys, Jersey guys. Can't wait to get back and see them, Jimmy. Yes. We're going to have a little dinner with them, but, uh, you know, caffeine, Robin. Caffeine. Now, back to, back to the Michelle story. So yeah. we, we, Since we were talking about golf and the Valspar Open, which, of course, Sam Burns did win, uh, we, you know, we started talking. So when Michelle and I were in Nantucket, they, we, uh, Mike, Mike Walsh and his wife, Katie, were talking about going to Scotland. And my wife's like, oh, my God, I, I, I would love to go to Scotland. Jimmy, let's go to Scotland. And Katie, Brad's wife, looked at her and goes, well, you do play golf, right? <laughs> and she says, no. And she goes, well, it's like $5,000 to ride around on the cart if you don't play. Exactly right. And so there's no way I don't think your husband's going to want to take you for five grand just to ride around the golf cart. And she said, we came home from that trip. Robin, I'm not lying to you, TC. 
she said, I'm going to learn how to play golf just so she can go to Just Scotland. so she can go? <laughs> but she loves it now. She's been playing for a little over a year and a half. It's fun. And by next year, we're going to be going to Scotland with that, Red and Katie. That's, good. that's on my bucket list with my brother. We're definitely going to make a trip out there. You know, um, you guys come with us. Uh, we're making a big party. Yeah, because I would make such a fool out of myself. I'll no, drive. Rob, you're I'll golf. Drive the cart. That's the beauty of golf. Right. But listen, I've been playing for 40 years, Robin, and I still make a fool out of myself <laughs> every time I exactly go. Exactly right. You never, <laughs> it's the hardest game to play. You know, it really is. But um, it, hey, it, speaking of games and playing games and getting paid, Jimmy, before we get weighed on, my goodness gracious, another three year contract for $105 million. The Twins all of a sudden found some money in their bank for Correa. And yeah. then Story goes to the Red Sox for a six year deal for 140 I mean, it's a. Uh, it's, you know, you probably want to punch me in the face, but you, no. you guys, there's no. you, your whole team didn't make that for their whole career. Never mind. What I'm gonna, you know. what I'm, I'm one of the different old guys. You know, most of the time when I heard guys, you know, complain, oh my God, they're making so much money. We, we didn't make that kind of, but I am one of the guys in 94 that struck. We went on strike and it reinforces how strong and how great Donald Fair and Gene Orza, our leaders of our union, were right. back in the day when the highest paid salary was like six or seven million, and they kept telling us, "Don't break, don't cross the picket line," because we thought six, seven million was a lot of money. Exactly. And, and they kept saying, "Do not cross the line, do not go back," because a lot of guys wanted to keep playing, and they said, "One day, guys are going to make twenty million dollars." We're like, "No way, that's never going to happen. There's no possible way that could happen." And here we are to this day now, guys, getting 30 to $40 million contracts. And as much as I want to go, God, I wish I, were gonna be, I could be You're playing happy. now. You were a foundation for it. We were a foundation for that. Right. And to be part of something like that, putting your faith in something like Donald Fair and Gene Orza, and then having it come to fruition like it's come. I mean, the minimum salary, and we'll talk about this with Wade, because Wade came up in, in the 80s. Right. I came up in the 90s. My minimum salary was 69000 I can't imagine what his minimum was. The minimum is now 715000 for your first year God bless. in the big leagues. It's amazing. And that's amazing. And, again, I am not one to complain. Like the old guys, some of the old guys, I'm so happy because I put my faith in that back in the day before right. it happened. And to see it happen, it's, it's such a blessing. The only problem I have with it is that do you think the players that today are educated what – you and all your crew did because you, you, you were you were set in your ways. You weren't going to give in. Like, you listened to the lawyers and the union reps back then. They, you, you go now, I, I think they're a little salty, as they say. They're more cocky. They, do, they, they never have to. I don't think they sign autographs. They don't do as much as they used to because they don't have to. They're, they're, there's no life after baseball for them. They don't need to have a life after baseball. They're set for life. And I'm not begrudging them either. I think it's great, by the way. I, I do. I, I, same wow. with entertainers. If I'm going to come listen to you, and somebody's making money, and I want to pay, and you give me a good show, I should pay for it. I get it, you know. Well, I always say this. One of the things the Yankees have always done so great is to bring back former players in the locker room. In, you know, get, when we had Old Timers Day, I was sitting next to Moose Scourin and Hank Bauer. Yep. Now, it wasn't, it wasn't Reggie Jackson. It wasn't you know, Yogi Berra. Right. It wasn't the main guys. It wasn't the big-name guys because they didn't need to do all this extra work and all these things. But Moose Scourin, Hank Bauer, Mickey Rivers, you know, all these guys came to Yankee Stadium a lot. And, they, and when they came, George had a rule. When you guys are in town, please let me know. I want my players to meet you. I want these young kids to see That's awesome. what the Yankee tradition is all about. And, you, man, man, I learned so much. And I just wish the Yankees would do more of that because I think some of the, like you said, some of these young kids, I can walk in the Yankee Stadium right now and they're like, Sir, what are you doing in my locker room? What are you doing? Yeah, you it's doing amazing. Here? You yeah. know, we had Legends Day, you know, at the Bears, and we had Bobby Richardson come right. with Whitey yeah. Ford yeah. and Ralph Terry, and they sat and rocked Timmy Raines' office. And Bobby Richardson told us an amazing story. Him oh. and Mickey Mantle were best friends, and how when Mickey was dying, Bobby was at his deathbed. Yep. And, 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 you know, like, you were just... You just were starstruck about the stories and stuff. But, um, yeah, I hope these young guys uh, do appreciate it. I went to the game yesterday, do a little, have a little fun by myself. I sat out there, and, uh, you know, I'm looking at Aaron Judge, and that's another thing I'm confused about. Every, and I'm sure the Yankees will work it out. But here's a good guy, man. It seems to be a good guy. I had my bellman at the hotel tell me today he lived across the street. What a great guy Aaron Judge was. He never walked by anybody. And uh, the Yankees haven't pulled the trigger on him, you know, and I'm anxious to see what they do. Everybody's yeah. getting these big salaries, and I, I hope they don't let him go. He's good for New York. He's I don't good. think they're going to. I think Hal kind of hinted 
you know, just recently, uh, the last couple of days, hinted that they are working on a deal with him, that they want to make sure that, you know, they, they want to protect themselves because of the injuries, because some of the, the, the opportunity that, that he hasn't played. But, you know, I think in the long run, this is one kid that they're going to hold on to. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things you just never know. You know, it's, it's, it's one of the great things about the Yankees is that they usually keep trying to keep a core together, and then they bring in guys like we did in the late night in the early nineties. Right. And matter of fact, one of the guys that we brought in happens to be on the line right now. Exactly, Mister Wade Boggs, Hall of Famer. Oh, Thanks that for is, joining the King and the Cop. Wait a minute, I got to give him his lead in. Three thousand hit was his home run. He's a twelve. Twelve. Oh. He's a 12-time All-Star, 96 World Series champ, an eight-time Silver Slugger, five times AL batting champion. His number 26 was retired in Boston. His number 12 was retired in Tampa. And what else? Jeez, wait, I didn't know you had all this stuff. He's an author of a book, too. And Well, yeah, we'll get to that with Robin. She wants to talk to him about his chicken. But, uh, Wade, <laughs> welcome to the show, brother. Oh, you there, Wade? Are you uh, Hey, what's happening? You, you took yourself off mute? What's that? I said we, we were just making sure we can hear you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good to go. How are you doing today, man? Good. Things are great. Living the dream, baby. We're having some technical difficulties. Hold on. Now, can you hear us? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? It's our first show in our studio, and so we're having little technical situations, but are you coming from home or where are you at? In Tampa Palms. Oh, very nice, very nice. And we were, you know, just before we were talking, before we were bringing you on, we were just discussing, you know, finally having baseball back and what it's all about. And Wade, let's start just talking with you a little bit about what it was like uh, when you first broke into the big leagues. I was talking to Tommy that my when you know my first year in the big leagues, the minimum salary was sixty nine thousand dollars. What was the minimum salary when you came in? Thirty-two-five. That's that's crazy. It's amazing. That's crazy. But yeah, so we. I think the minimum salary now is seven forty. Seven forty. Yep. Yeah. They've come a long way. They've definitely come a long way. Well, and it's one of the things I was telling Tommy. I, you know, one of the things that you and I take a lot of pride in, and people of our era that played that during that time, is that we struck in '94, and at that time. Players were making six or seven million, and Donald Fair and Gene Orza were telling us guys will make twenty million one day, and we didn't really fully buy into that. But then we we trusted it, and to see these guys making the money they're making now, it kind of gives me. I told Tommy, it kind of gives me a little bit of pride of saying, you know what, we did the right thing back then by listening to our union and staying with the union. Well, in my opinion, I think we've got the strongest union of of any professional sport. Right. Uh, Far because of the unity that, that we had, and, and everyone stuck together and stuck to their guns. And, and I've been through three work stoppages, a strike, and a lockout. So when you are the, the nucleus of, of everybody sticking together, and you know, you've heard it from these guys nowadays that, that said that uh, the reason that they're doing it is for the younger players. Right. And I understand that. I understand that. But but you gotta you gotta do it for the older players too. I mean, right, right. Those, the veterans, you just can't have a whole bunch of young guys on your team. You've got to have some some uh, some veteran presence there, some leadership. And and when you get thirty two, thirty three years old, you know there's fifteen more spots to DH now. Right. And now that the National League has adopted that, so. That gives the, the older guys that uh, can't play in the field anymore uh, an opportunity to still stay in the game and, and be visible. You know, uh, Wade, you, you mentioned that, and in 96, the Yankees proved that. You, with you, Timmy Raines, you know, you get these veterans that come on your team in, in their future Hall of Famers, and they were part of the puzzle, the big piece of the puzzle, as you know, To um, even though the guy next to me kicked off this dynasty, it took a lot of veterans on that team, Cecil Fielder, you, and Rock, and... You know, you don't see that that much anymore. In 94, when, when we went on strike, and, and believe me, I had, I had no idea that 
Bud Selig was going to cancel the season. And uh, that was that was the best Yankee team I had played on. Yep. And we were we were definitely probably going to go to the World Series that year, if not win it. And then when Bud Selig pulled the plug and said the season's over, no World Series or anything like that, it was it was kind of a culture shock. And then uh, we put some pieces of the puzzle together for '95 and and ran into a buzzsaw with uh, Seattle, but. Um, yeah, 96 was, was a wonderful blend of, of, of unique talent, and it was there, there was a lot of chemistry on that team, and, and I think that that's what uh, put us over the hump. Yeah, yeah, that was, that, was, that was a pretty special season. But one of the things that, you know, the name of our show, Wade, is called The King and the Cop. And, of course, Tommy's a former Newark cop, and, you know, we do a couple of different things. And then he was asking me earlier um, – about when you jumped up on top of the horse, which is, of course, one of the most famous photos of the, that, that 96 World Series. And I said to him that I wanted to, to ask Wade the story that I heard, and I think it was from you. I don't know if it was for Chef. But one of the reasons you did that is you did have a fear of horses. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but when I was five years old, I got bit in the back by a horse. And, and I, I, I sort of always carried that with me. And... <laughs> and I would rather walk up a mountain than ride a horse, but um, yeah, I've never gone back to look at the video to see exactly how I got up on that 18-hand or 20-hand <laughs> police horse that was so big, and and next thing I know, I'm in left center field riding around on a police horse. Uh, that was awesome. One of the most iconic pictures that, that sort of illustrates 96, and, and I'm really glad I did it because it's paid me a lot of money, thank goodness, but... Um, it, it was so special that night because we were when we did the dog pile and we decided to take a victory lap and and I think if you go back and look you're gonna you're gonna see something that that r- really has never happened. The fans stayed in their seats. Right. They didn't bum rush the field and charge the field and start stealing everybody's hat and gra- and grass and bases and everything like that. They just stood and applauded. And I think that that's what created the victory lap. And, and believe me, I had no idea that I would wind up on the back of a police horse and, and uh, ride around Yankee Stadium. But... Um, I'm oh, it's a legendary picture. It really is. I'm glad I did. Yeah. yeah. So, so wait. Of course, we're on 8:20 a.m. WWBA, the Big Eight Radio. One of the things that we are going to be this year is we're going to probably be the lead-in show to cover all the, the they cover all the Yankee broadcasts. So they broadcast the games down here in South Florida, and some of the listeners that that I was you know I googled out to that I, we were going to have you on the show today. They wrote me in a question. And they said they wanted to hear you, not me talk about it, because I talk about it all the time, but hear you talk about what it was like to get that, get that go-ahead walk in the World Series. And for one of the most famous things that you're remembered for as such a great hitter, that a walk is one of the, the biggest things, biggest at-bats of your life. Oh, it really was. I mean, it, it wouldn't have been possible unless you hit the home run, so thanks. <laughs> <laughs> It gave me an opportunity to walk up with the bases loaded in the tie game. But, um, yeah, d- during that whole sequence that, that started, um, Joe Torre actually told David Cohn to grab a bat. Okay. And Don Zimmer said, uh, Boggs is still available. And Jimmy Key looked at me when Coney was grabbing his helmet and a bat and everything like that, and Jimmy Key says, I wonder if they know that you're eligible. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Am I still on the roster or, or what have you? And then when Zim said, hey, Boggs is still available, then Tori said uh, for Coney to sit down, and, and I walked up to the plate, and, and Javier Lopez, the catcher for the Braves at the time, he's on his knees, and he looks up at me, and he goes, you live for this, don't you? And I said, I absolutely do. You know, we... And I, I had known that... Uh, that um, the pitcher... Um, Steve Avery. Uh, yeah, Steve Avery hadn't thrown in 17 days. Yep. So when you look at that, he's not going to be really crisp, really sharp around the around the plate. And, and uh, once I got the 3-2 and then took the, the 3-2 pitch uh, 
a little bit off the plate. It was probably two or three inches off the plate. And, yeah, it's it's one of my greatest at-bats that uh, for have a walk could yeah. actually come out of, of something that uh, that put us ahead and and uh, eventually got us to get back to uh, Yankee Stadium. You know, we're on the phone with Wade Boggs and uh, Hall of Famer, and it's an honor to have you on. And, I, you know, Jimmy and I were having a conversation at lunch, and I'm sure a few people know this, not many. You're one of the greatest power hitters there was in Major League Baseball. You could have been. You could have been. And you, you know, you elected to just be just a selfless player and, and you know, just trained yourself to get over 3,000 hits, which is remarkable. But but I laugh with all this shifts of today and the different shifts. You would have batted 400 if they were, had these shifts. Maybe five, maybe 500. I mean, what do you think about that with the shifts and, uh, you know, how you chose to do what you did as a player as opposed to today? Well, in actuality, it was an elective choice. Um, with my style of hitting, uh, where I wait, wait, and, and hit by recognition, um, I'm not going to hit the ball in front of the impact zone, and, and that creates loft, that creates elevation, and that creates distance. Uh, I would let the ball get very deep and in, in order to – recognize the pitch whether it's a fork ball slider change up or what have you and when you let the ball get deep like that you're going to hit a majority of line drives and i would play from right center to left center the biggest part of the ballpark and it wasn't it wasn't really a a, a conscious effort to sit there and walk up to the plate and say I, I just want a little dinky single and not hit a home run i i think if i'd have played 11 years in Wrigley Field, the way that I used the Green Monster in, in Boston, I would have hit close to 300 home runs because a lot of those balls that I hit high off the Monster are homers in other yeah. parks. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And if I'd, have, if I'd have played in Houston, oh, my gosh, I'd have had a, a ton of home runs. But um, the majority of my hits were, were doubles off the wall that, that, like I said, could have been homers in other ballparks. But... Um, that's a little sacrifice that you get, but it, the, the wall give us and the wall take us. That's, that's for sure. But as far as the shifts go, I, I can't believe that Major League Baseball is trying to ban something that guys don't have to work on their craft. Right. Uh, and, and hit the ball the other way. If, if guys are shifting you over there, hit the ball the other way. Right. I'm not advocating uh, these big power hitters like Judge or somebody come up and and try to lay down a bunt or anything like that, but use the whole field. Yep. And and at least get them back to the to the playing you straight up. You know, yeah, that's what, that's what I was telling Tommy that you know we used when I used to go to bat, I used to just look for the biggest hole and say, okay, I'm going to try to hit the ball that way, and like you said, either stay let the ball get back in the zone or you know try to get out in front to to, to find that hole to get the ball through that hole and. It's uh, it it just befuddles me when I watch these games and they have a whole side of the infield open and they can't hit a ball through there. I know it's it's amazing. Uh, we went into Minnesota one year, I think it was '87 or or what have you, and and Ray Miller came up to me during batting practice and he says, "We figured you out." And I said, "Oh, okay." So I walk up to the home plate and leading off the game, and Kenny Kaiser was the umpire, and. The shortstop and second baseman, Knobloch and Gagne, were behind second base, <laughs> <laughs> and I had no idea what was gonna what was going on. So naturally, I take the first pitch to see what's going on. Well, Gagne would move over, and Knobloch would stay up the middle. Then Knobloch would move over, and Gagne would stay up the middle. I went five for five. <laughs> Whoever didn't move, I hit the ball in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Exactly. And after the fifth hit, I'm on first, and, and Ray Miller just tips his cap from the dugout and said, he just threw up his hands and, and couldn't believe it. So, Wade, all, all those statistics I read off about you earlier about all your accomplishments in baseball and everything else, and Robin Deloria, who's one of our hosts on the show with me and is Tommy's wife, she always picks out something unique that she sees in the bios, and she noticed something that she wanted to ask you a question about. Hi, Wade. How are you? Thank you for being on the show. It is a, is a, is a complete honor to hear your stories, and really, thank you so much. Um, so uh, my question is, uh, can you hear me? 
Oh, okay, okay. Uh, my question is, well, let me just explain. I'm an Italian mother from New Jersey. So um, I like to think that my chicken cutlets are pretty much the best there <laughs> is. God, here we go. <laughs> um, and truth be told, they're the only things that my children eat besides, well, my meatballs are good and my sauce is good, but we're talking it's about chicken. It's only chicken, chicken Robin. It's only about chicken. chicken. It's about chicken. Be Wait, we, what, what got her involved here was... Because Go ahead. But what? you think the fork bowl is part of your conversation here, but the fork bowl is something baseball, not chicken related. But go ahead. <laughs> I have literally no idea what you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. You missed that. It went over, so, over right. your head. So Robin wants to ask you about your chicken, your book, The Foul Tips. Yes, exactly. So the, your book, and it was only chicken, which I find really interesting. So I thought, all right, well, let me hear what he does. So let me ask you a question. Chicken cutlets. Ready? Olive oil, canola oil, or vegetable oil? I would go with olive oil. Oh, all right. A little heavy, a little heavy. All right. Um, breadcrumbs, panko, or breadcrumbs? Uh, Italian breadcrumbs. All right. So you don't soak them, the, the bread and milk. All right. This is not going to like become it. Emma's like cooking it. show. I like here. it. Did he say no? He said no. Did he, he say no? He said no. Yep. All right, now one last question. When you take the cutlets out of the frying pan, do you separate them with paper towels or not? Uh, you can. You can. <laughs> we, we have to get Debbie on this. We have to get Debbie on the line for that answer. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, it was interesting because Robin was telling me that her son, you know, he's he's a big football player in New Jersey, and all he wants to do is eat chicken. And I said, well, listen, you got to ask Wade about this because this is this is what he used to do before every single game. I would be really honored if you would come to our home so my son can meet you and we could have a chicken uh, chicken cutlet cook off. Oh, great, great. <laughs> There you go. All right, let's get back to some baseball talk. So, Wade, we're talking about the Yankees. We're, you know, this is going to be their station during the season. Um, you, you, you've you seen what's gone on during the offseason. Do you still follow it pretty much? I, every once in a while. I, I don't sit there and have 10 TVs and, and different games or anything like that. But, right. Uh, I, I'll watch a little bit of spring training, and, and the thing that's really turned me off about the game is the strikeouts. Yes. It's through the roof, and, and any time you have more strikeouts than hits in a month, uh, you're not doing the right thing. And I, I understand that the, the Yankees have made uh, some moves to lower their strikeout rate and got rid of a couple players and got a couple new players that uh, their strikeouts are down right but when you've got nobody out or a man or one out and a man on third and guy go a guy goes up and swings as hard as he can three times and then strikes out with a guy on third and not trying to put the ball in play it's, it's something needs to be addressed and and i don't i don't know if it's part of the philosophy that the hitting coaches have, you know, go ahead and air it out and see what happens. Jimmy was just telling me about a stat about Gallo from the Yankees about if, if the shifts aren't in play, Jimmy, what did they say his percentage was? Yeah, it was like 43% of his hits were taken away by the guy that was in short right center. And so that's, that, 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 I, that, I, that part I understand because that is not natural, but, um, you know, it, it's like they're still allowed to put three guys on the side of the infield, but they can't put anybody in the outfield this year. So that's a little bit different. I, I, I agree with that. But yeah. when you, that gets back to sabermetrics. Yep. And when a guy patterns himself of where he hits the ball, then somebody's going to be standing where he hits the ball. Exactly. And, you know, I, but the thing about it is, is why can't you have four outfielders? Yeah. Say your left, say your left fielder is a little slow. And a guy comes up and he hits predominantly 80 to 85 percent fly balls, and the left fielder is kind of not footworthy. But you would stick the second baseman in left center and move the slower guy over to the line a little bit and have four outfielders to to run it down. I'm not saying that you put five guys out there, but yeah, but that was when you when you put seven guys on one side of the field and and you go up there and hit into the shift then 
You deserve what you get. Ex- well, and I said the same thing. I, I, it's one of those things that if you can't, if you can just hit the ball three times the other way, then the shift goes away. You know, absolutely. You know, and it's 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 just one of those things that it, it's as somebody that was a hitter, you know, I was blessed. I was one. You know, I, I look back on my career all the time, and I go, I was one of the blessed players during the, that era of the you know that that '90s era, and I had you, I had Tony Gwynn, and I had Don Mattingly in my batting groups. And there was so much that I learned from you guys. And it, it wasn't a matter of what you were talking to me about. It's just watching you guys and how you worked and how you did. You, you honed your craft of hitting. And uh, it, was just, it was just such a blessing for me to be, to be able to watch you guys. I appreciate that. Thank you. You know, uh, Wade, last thing before we let you go. I think you're coming down to Ybor City uh, uh, this Friday for a little cigar smoke. Or bourbon and cigars. Bourbon and cigars we hear. Yeah, this is where our studio is right now. We're down in Ebor right now. So, um, cool. you know, hopefully uh, maybe Jimmy and I got to change a few things, stop by and say hello to you. That'd be, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Wade, it's been an honor really to have you as our lead-off Hall of Famer for us, for our show, our first show with this radio station. It's, is, it's all downhill from here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what we do after having a Hall of Famer on. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. You want me to bring on one of my housewife friends? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Booger, thank you so much for coming on, brother, and uh, hopefully I'll get to see you a couple times this year. You bet. You thanks, bet. thanks, Wade. All Appreciate right, brother. It. Bye-bye. Thanks. So, that was great. Yeah, was great. What a, you know, to do wow. us a favor in the next hour, give us a call at 727-518-0820, uh, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. We have our hometown guy, Tampa Wade Boggs, on our show to kick it off. Pretty cool. Oh, yeah. He's he's one of those guys that just, uh, you know, he, you could sit there and talk to him all day about hitting. I mean, literally we could do a two hour show just talking with Wade Boggs about hitting and it wouldn't get old because I've, I've done so many events with him. I've listened to him talk and it, it, it never gets old. It's something that, you know, when you play with someone who's so accomplished in the game of baseball at a, at a, at a task that was considered the hardest thing to do in sports. And this guy was one of the best ever at it. Uh, it's just, it's such a pleasure to talk to these kind of guys. And I wish, you know, I, everybody always, always, whoa, whoa, who would you have liked to interview back in the day? And I'm like, yeah. Ted Williams. Yeah. Like, I mean, and just what yeah. you said to be in the cages with Mattingly oh. and, and Boggs and Gwynn. I mean, you're, you're a lucky man. And probably why you had the success you did, because you were a listener and follower when it comes to that. You, lo- you, you know, you, you learned well, man. Oh, yeah. You know, it was, it was one of the things that, like I said, they were just blessed. And I, I love... Uh, someone like Wade, like I said before, before he came on the air, that you know he was considered this non-team guy, and was, yeah. and he came over and changed everybody's attitude and everything else. But then, ha- what most people didn't realize is just how really how lighthearted and funny the guy was. That even though he was a serious baseball guy between the lines, that he had such a great sense of humor. He was a hell of a beer drinker too, but uh, you know, but he was just such a funny, easygoing guy. And uh, it was just, it was, it was really a pleasure to play with him. And I was very fortunate, like I said, to, uh, to be able to learn. Yeah. And it's nice. You yeah. still have that brotherhood, you know, you yeah. reached out and here he gives up his time and, you know, real quick, the late Tony Gwynn and, yeah. and, and uh, his son-in-law played on the North bears, yeah. as you know, and, and Ozzie Smith's son played on the North bears. So I had the great thrill of having he, Tony Gwynn come see his son-in-law and I had Ozzie Smith and they're sitting in my office one and I'm just sitting there just listening because I had the best view from my office and uh, th- they talked about hitting for like an hour straight. Tony oh, yeah. didn't stop talking about hitting. That's what I'm saying. Was, he could have been out for three hours. Right. I, said, yeah. I wish I met him when I was 10 years old. You oh know? yeah. It was just he would have told, he would have told us stories about how his dad used to put different colors. It was amazing. Like um, in marker um, on the ball. ball. That's right. And he had to recognize if it was a red, if it was a red mark, he couldn't swing at it. If it was green or blue, he was allowed to swing at it and just things like that. Well, after the yeah. break, uh, I might have to give, um, our guys, a little video. It's five seconds. The twenty thirty eight MLB first round pick, uh, Maxwell Thomas Donahue. There you go. Was in the backyard <laughs> swinging, and he with his pacifier in his mouth. With a pacifier, and he smoked it. My yeah. goodness. You need to explain to the listeners who you're talking about. My grandson. Why he's so special. Well, to I you. thought he, everybody knew who he was already. They yeah. know him. He's, he's, he's going to be the, the first pick in twenty thirty eight. Of course, they know who he is. He's already getting. Uh, Calls so um, no great guests. Thanks, Mr. Boggs, and I call you that because that was pretty amazing, guys. Yeah. That really was. Yeah, I mean, I, you don't have to know baseball to have been completely enamored by that story, those stories, 
Really? Life experience. Nothing yes. Better. Yeah. I mean, again, it's and and he's a Tampa guy, and right, and we are the Big Eight of Tampa. So yes, you know, it's uh, it was it, it. I'm really glad. I'm very grateful that he was able to join us. Uh, and like I said, we're going to try to get Rex Chapman on this week for talk a little bit more about basketball. Um, talk about how there's so St. Peter's beat Kentucky. What, well, we're, we're done we're, talking about that. I think Robin's hoping we can say St. Peter's beat Purdue because yeah, then they the go to the makers, final eight. Right. The yeah. boy, the Jersey's makers. going all the way, baby. They, they, all the way. They want to get to that elite eight. <laughs> Jersey better go all the way because our Giants and our Jets are disgusting lately. I mean, and the Yankees haven't done us any favors, and the Mets are the Mets. Although under new ownership, people are expecting a lot different, especially in our household. I got two Met fans. And uh, I love the story, Jimmy, when we all went to the Met game, my one stepson to Jimmy said, uh, you know, I said, the Yankees, 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 heartbreak. He said, well, the Red Sox, uh, they're not that good of a team. Jimmy goes, yeah, they won the World Series last year. You know, getting a game, kid, you're missing a good one. Exactly. We'll, we'll be back shortly with the King and the Cop on, on the 820 WWBA. Big trade in the NFL today as the Atlanta Falcons head quarterback Matt Ryan to the Indianapolis Colts. In return, the Colts will get a third-round pick in the draft. Atlanta will have to incur more than $40.5 million of dead cap space against their salary cap this season, but did create about $9 million of cap space by trading Ryan to Indy. The Falcons then agreed to terms with quarterback Marcus Mariota on a two-year deal, according to reports. Quarterback Jameis Winston signing a two-year deal to return to the $28 million. In college basketball, Murray State head coach Matt McMahon is leaving to become the new men's basketball coach at LSU, while Maryland is named Kevin Willard, their new men's basketball coach. He spent the last 12 years with Seton Hall. The Portland Trailblazers announced that guard Damian Lillard will not return to action this season following ab surgery, while the Athletics says that Zion Williamson won't play for the Pelicans this year as he tries to recover from off-season foot surgery. <laughs> This is the Big Eight. Sports, information, and entertainment. This is AM 820 WWBA Largo and AM 1060 WIXC Titusville. Do you despise lawyers? That may be the case until you need one. If you've been in an auto accident and need legal advice, go to the local attorneys that have served Tampa Bay families for over 28 years. Catania and Catania. They are family owned. They understand your needs with legal advice. When you need legal representation, Catania Catania will care for your case from the beginning to final settlement. You won't need to worry. Catania Catania will represent you throughout the entire process. Auto and motorcycle accidents are too frequent in Florida. If you've been a victim, contact Catania Catania. They don't get paid if you don't get paid. Referrals on request. Contact Catania Catania. Putting families first. Offices Tampa, not attorney spokesperson. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. They do not give up until you pay. They put a lien on my house. How about you? Do you owe back taxes? Call Tax Solutions now and get some help. For a limited time, the IRS offers a tax forgiveness program called the Fresh Start Initiative. Our team can make it easier for you to pay back taxes, avoid tax liens, and get a fresh start. Some Sometimes you just need a second chance. I call Tax Solutions Now, and they got the IRS off my back. At Tax Solutions Now, our affiliates are all accredited by the Better Business Bureau and members of the National Association of Tax Professionals. We saved our home and overcame the most powerful collection agency in the world.
Well, time is running out. Call Tax Solutions now. Call 800-398-7054. 800-398-7054. 800-398-7054. Look, staying healthy isn't easy. Watching your diet, hitting the gym, avoiding stress. But a good night's rest helps boost your overall health and wellness. And it couldn't be easier. The new Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed senses and automatically adjusts to keep you both effortlessly comfortable. The result? You wake up ready for anything. Proven quality sleep is life-changing sleep. Don't miss the final days of the biggest sale of the year where all Smart Beds are on sale. Save 50% on the new Sleep Number 360 Limited Edition Smart Bed. Ends Monday. To learn more, go to sleepnumber.com. Frank's Red Hot is the perfect blend of flavor and heat. That's why you can use an entire bottle to make buffalo chicken dip. The kind you might make for when you're watching the game at home. And maybe this year there's less people around to watch the game with. But that just means there's more dip. And it's all for you. Some of you may say, that's too much dip. But deep down in your heart of hearts, you know it isn't. So go ahead. Finish it. Frank's Red Hot don't judge. Frank's Red Hot. I put that sh** on everything. I would like to introduce to you at this time... The King and the Cop. Okay, hey, hey. Let's get back to the show. Welcome back, everybody, to The King and the Cop. Jimmy Lair, it's Robin DeLore. You know, I just got told that one of our callers, friends, Joe Hotshot from New Jersey, is upset at me, Jimmy, because I'm picking on the Mets. <laughs> what? What? I mean, what do we talk about with the Mets? I mean, what can we possibly talk about with the Mets? Well, it's one of those things that after so many times of disappointments, you know, it's it's you you kind of just start to expect it again, right? You know, but all it don't takes, raise your kid as a Met fan. You know, all it takes is for them to win and win even through September when it's important. It's already cost me two um, plaster guys to redo my wall because my. Uh, my roommates down the hallway, Michael and Joey, Robin's sons, have uh, they're very emotional when the Mets lose, and a couple clickers went flying. <laughs> I told them if they threw that good, they should be playing baseball in college someday. Well, but. I do think I do think this year is going to be different, and I think the Steve Cohen era is going to be different for the New York Mets. I think it's going to be a situation that uh, they are definitely going to be improved. I think they're. With Buck Showalter at the at the at the head, I think that's going to help them. Well, Buck, that was a big move. Buck I mean, is, I know he's a friend of yours, but they, to bring in a veteran like that to settle everybody down, I think was brilliant. Well, that's just it. Buck has always gone into where it's chaos and been able to calm things down. And you know, the, the early '90 Yankees with Stump Merrill, and you know, they were we were we were in chaos. We were losing 90, 95 games. Buck Showalter turned that around, left there, went to Arizona, started that organization got them to the point where the year he left the next year they won and so here's a pattern that kind of developed and even though he didn't have the success that he wanted in Baltimore um, I just think that you know he's he's able to take a team like this and possibly calm everything down he knows the New York media he knows the New York situation and I think the Mets are going to su surprise some people this year. You know, I'm rooting for him because I would love, because I feel like he got cheated with you guys, with the Yankees a little bit, because yes. you were there. Like Wade said, in 94, 95, you, you, you possibly win the World Series there. And and I'm rooting for him, but God, I can't even stomach them win the World Series because I'll have to move out of the house. I mean, and I just can't take it. <laughs> they talk as if the Mets are the, the dynasty that the Yankees are, but um, it's fun. It's a good back and forth banter but you know speaking of back and forth how about the nfl with all Oof. these quarterback changes Jeez. i mean matt ryan to the colts i mean you know not that matt ryan ever can you ever recover after that super bowl yeah. i don't think you ever recover i mean atlanta the way they blew that lead it, you, you know i thought he would have moved on a couple of years ago but matt ryan's a great quarterback and now the Colts and who else is on the move? There's a there was a few moves this week, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, Watson's once, finally cleared well, to play. Of course, you know, Deshaun Watson gets signed, and of course, Baker Mayfield, who they thought was they were going to bring back for another year, yeah. he requests a trade. Well, okay, you want to get traded? Okay, we're signing Deshaun Watson. Right. So now the Browns have Watson uh, in a big contract. Well, know, at least he's a, got all those commercials, Mayfield. Yeah, exactly. But where's he going to end up? It, that's a good question, and, and where he's going to wind up. And then, of course, once Matt Ryan leaves the Falcons, Marcus Mariota signs a two-year deal with the Falcons. Right. And then Jamison Winston is being brought back by the Saints. Saints. By the Saints. So, you, you know, it's no, not that it's no secret to our listeners, though. You know, I live half of my time, Robin and I, uh, we have the kids. We live in Florham Park, New Jersey, the home of the Jets. I love how they call them the New York Jets, but they're in New Jersey, but uh, that's another sore subject. But – 
When are they going to do something too? That's a, the, the Jets and the Mets, 1969. How about a, how about a little love for uh, for the fans of New Jersey, the Jets? I mean, I just all these quarterbacks are getting shuffled around, and 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 we still have the unknown back in New York uh, with the Giants quarterback and the Jets. We, we're not sure what kind of season they're going to have, but as a fan to be out of the playoffs by the sixth, seventh game in a NFC season, that's not fun. You no, know? no, and it's every year it's like, oh, we, we're going to be better this year. We're going to get better, and it winds up, unfortunately, being the same disappointment. Kind of feels like, kind of feels like our Jets have become the Cubs. That's exactly right. But at least the <laughs> Cubs won a World Series not too long ago. But um, I don't know. You know, tomorrow we're going to head out to um, see the Blue Jays and the Yankees and go talk to a few of your old friends. Uh, I got one more thing though. I went, what? This is this is kind of you know we had this Aaron Rodgers stuff. No, that, but, that went on, yeah. and you know, with the Green Bay and everything else, and then you know, he, he ends up re-signing with Green Bay, and everybody said, "Oh, it's because Devonte Adams is there, and this is going to be a great combination." He's going to, and then all of a sudden today, Devonte Adams I saw goes that. to the Raiders. I know, I saw that. And Derek Carr and him are going to be teamed up, and that's going to be a heck of a combination. I like Derek Carr. I really yeah. do. I think he's a good uh, quarter. I, I think he's more than a good quarterback. I, I love he's him. another winner. I love him more because he's a born again Christian, and he does so many great things from the Christian level. Level for kids and what he's doing in Vegas is unbelievable. Some of the organizations that he's developed. That's awesome. And yeah, that's 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 my Matt Ryan. I mean, that's my uh, Derek Carr. Listen, you know. I don't know enough about the John Gruden thing. I don't think any of us do. No. I don't think it was right what he admitted to certain things that was wrong. But you know what I loved? Carr stood by him. Yeah, he's my friend. He's my mentor. He's my neighbor. He made a mistake. He's everybody deserves to be forgiven. Where everybody else just got on a train and crushed. Gruden, maybe justified, but you know it's so it's nice when some of your buddies, as the guy on my right, we stand up for each other once in a while. You make mistakes in life. I mean, I mean, nobody means to. When somebody comes out and you, they say I really didn't mean to hurt anybody. Sometimes you got to give them the benefit of the doubt. Well, it was interesting because I saw one of the things that I heard from John Gruden that it said that he has during this time found out who his friends are. Yep. Well, that's what happens. He just sold you know his what? house. I see he's out of Vegas, though, now. That's you know, it. Yeah, one of the things that, you know, I, you, like we said, Tommy, you and I have been through some of this stuff, too. One of the things that you recognize, when you, you can be a little bit arrogant. You can be a little bit cocky. You can be whatever you want as long as you were winning. That's as right. As long as you were an important part still. You know, I, I, as long as you are still valuable on the field or you're going to be, you know, you're going to be needed. But when you're not, and something like this happens to you, you actually truly find out who those friends are because you're, there's no other there's no other need for you besides being your friend. That's right. And that's that for me was the most in, enlightening part of uh, my my you know, rebirth and born again was realizing that who are the true people, and, and of course that's why I'm sitting here next to you because you you were one of those guys. Um, but it was interesting with Gruden to hear him you know, to, to talk about that because same thing. I had him on such a high pedestal. I had right. him on such a, and it, it had nothing to do with his opinion or whatever he might feel about somebody personally. It's, it's how great he was in the game of football. I know. And football is less without John Gruden. Yeah, I, I can miss him. I, I hope they give him a second chance. Yeah. Listen, uh, Big Joe from Jersey, do me a favor. Don't hide like Met fans do behind the curtain or behind the email. Call me at 727-518-0820, the 20. Call me, and I'll, I'll talk to you about the Mets. I'll be more than happy to go back and forth. And, I, and uh, this guy next to me, he had a little uh, cup of coffee with the Mets too, so it'll be a fair conversation. <laughs> But, um, Robin, you with us? You drinking your caffeine yet or what? What do we got going on? I'm still not done with my first coffee of the day. Uh, house, but, house, uh, house. No, I mean, what am I going to say? I don't, I, I don't, I, I didn't know. I didn't really even have any idea what you were talking about. So what am I going to? Yes, Talk about NFL, something I don't know. The NFL is not Robin's segment. Well, you know. well, what I will say is I can speak on obviously the the realization about finding true friends. Yes, and yep. they're very hard to find. But I mean, you know, Jimmy already covered that. So what am I going to say? Well, you, you know, speaking of your dear friends Don and Christina, I mean, she's probably Christina's probably thrilled that Villanova again is on their way to Sweet Sixteen. You know, all our Villanova friends and. You know, I, I, it's, uh, we'll have to have her on this week and let her get her two cents in about Villanova basketball. She told us the other day that she had the honor of 
going on a private jet one day with about 10 of the alumni to go see. The, and Aaron. And Tommy. Aaron. Yeah, and Aaron to go see a damn Villanova basketball game. But, um, That's the way to go, Robin. That's yeah. the way to yeah. go. Yeah. You got to have friends in high places. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're going to have, um, we're going to discuss a little serious subject coming on on the cop side at 530. There was a, um, and we're going to have our dear friend Mark Skeels on and, and he's bringing Mark Fleming on who was part of a case. Mark wasn't, but uh, Mark Fleming was part of the case about uh, San Diego had to just pay $85 million to a family um, that the cops encountered their uh, family member and he had some mental issues and the cops got too aggressive and unfortunately this gentleman died and years later now the county had to pay $85 million and again the cops sometimes don't de-escalate things and uh, we'll hear that story. I'm not excited to hear it. It's a sad story but uh, we'd love to know what the real feelings are there. So we, we got that coming up at 5.30. And, um, well, and that's what we know. talk about. You know, I know you don't like the, you know, you, you don't, when it's your own product and your own thing, you don't talk about it much. But the bowler app, to me, has to be started to be more publicly acknowledged. And I think it's been, you know, it's one of those things that it is an alternative to, it's, it's, a, it's a safe measure to disarm, to dis able somebody to you know and, and you've told me some stories about people that have actually used it the people said thank you for not shooting my Saving son lives. thank you for not you know yep. shooting him and, and you were able to subdue him and be able to you know calm him down you know once somebody's trapped like that i can't imagine that you you, you do you feel defenseless you know nobody wants to be and, touched jimmy nobody well, wants to, exactly. somebody to put their hands on anybody and, and we got to get to that part and training. We don't need to fund police departments. We need right. to reallocate money to certain different tools. They need to have tools that could de-escalate situations. I'm honored and flattered that I was one of the visionaries of a company called Bowler App, and we're trying to do that, but but it changes tough. People don't want to change. And, yes. And, you know, these cops walk around with these belts. They look like Oh, God, it drives me crazy. It's another subject. But, they, you know, they got more weapons and protection on them, and I know they need them. I do know they need them. But, boy, what happened to the cop that used to be on the corner that would tap you on the back and uh, go, go home, Tommy, your mother's waiting for you. It's lunchtime. Mm-hmm. You, know, right. you know, those days are over. But uh, we'll talk to Mark Skeels and Mark Fleming at 530 with that. But um, All right, let's know. get talking about something else coming up soon in the Masters again. Let's go back to some golf. Who are you picking in the Masters this year? Uh, you know... I got my pick. Do you? Yeah. It's so great. I mean, right now, golf to me, and, and you know, it, it does help that I love golf. Um, but for golf to me, even my wife, who, just, like I mentioned before, has just started to take the sport up. She's actually starting to get to know, oh, did you know that guy won last year? No, week? she's you know, using you to oh. get a trick. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> yeah, but, I mean, t- there's so many great young players playing nowadays. And the one thing that I love about it's not like the Tiger Woods days when you knew Tiger would win by 15 strokes and then the rest of the field That's would right. come in. It, it, the, the parody in golf right now is so great, but not even the parody because these guys have cut, fallen down. They're playing great golf. They're setting course records. They're doing things that you know have never been done before. And it's just so great to watch uh, – you know, this, and then I think this year's Masters, after last year, of course, being, you know, the COVID and everything else, and, and, and we haven't had it really truly for almost two years. We've had a lot of visions of the Masters, but not the true Masters. This is the first year that the true Masters is really back, and I think it's going to be a great event. And who am I going to pick, Tommy? I'm going to go with Justin Thomas. Yeah, I wrote it down, so you're not getting the credit for that. I wrote it oh, down. You did? That's my pick, oh, Justin my Thomas. I wrote it down. <laughs> You know, I think I it's his. See. It's your. It's his yeah. year. I, I. Well, you know, I was watching the last couple of tournaments, and yesterday he could have easily won yesterday, right. and exactly. I watched it. And and the players. Speaking of money, we're picking on uh, baseball how much they make. The players' first prize was three million dollars. Yeah. And Jack Nicklaus says that these guys they're not hungry enough anymore because they make so much money <laughs> off the course. They don't even have, it's not even about that, but $3 million for a week's work ain't bad either. But yeah, I'm picking Justin Thomas. I, I, I like him. Okay. Another guy speaking of making a mistake, he made a mistake. He lost sponsors and everything, but he's trying to do the right thing. And I, I like him. I think he's a, he's a good, um, a, a great golfer. And I love his story. His father's his coach, always been his coach. His father's always by his side. His grandfather, I believe also was a, a PGA, uh, 
Pro and um, oh, so I can't take Justin Thomas. No, you can't take the I same can't. one. Then, 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 then there's no competition. I'm here. going on FanDuel now. Yeah, I'm locking yeah. it in. Yeah, we have to have a competition <laughs> there. Okay, so I'm going to take my heart favorite first, and I want to see Jordan Spieth rebound. Oh, I do. I love him. It's What's such going a on? Disappointment with him. And I know he's. You know, it's it's and again, I'm. I don't mean that in a negative way. I meant that this guy. I there was nothing that you couldn't like about him. You ever see him with his sister? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I I cry every time I see, he just doesn't, he's just, he's he's just a good guy. Yeah. And, and to, to, to have what has happened to him over the years, I, I keep rooting for this guy more and more every time. And so my heart pick will be Jordan Spieth. Well, they're best friends. You know that, right? Yeah. Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth. I I would love to see the two of them come down the stretch. That would be great. Cause then you don't care who wins. I'm giving you my pick. All right. Go ahead. My real pick. And I'm gonna go with Dustin Johnson this year. Yeah, he's so tough. He's due. He's due. He won. Didn't he? We won it a couple of years ago. Well, yeah, a couple of years ago. But I'm saying he's due. As oh, far you mean as to win now? He hasn't yeah. played in a couple. Of, you know, he took some time off and he didn't play much. And who are you picking, Robin? <laughs> um, Happy Gilmore. No. Nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good answer. Good if, answer. <laughs> after your previous conversation about your husband, you could have at least got brownie points and picked me or something. For God's sake. <laughs> then we would have got call in saying that I'm calling myself your master. So you're right. That's just, maybe you're safer with Happy Gilmore. Good for you. Calling. Nobody's calling. Well, they're calling. I gave the wrong number at the top of the show. Exactly right. 727 518 0820. Where's Big Joe? He wants to talk to me about the Mets. Call me. Let's go. Come on, Joe. Let's go. Call He's me. He's a Jersey guy. You know, you know, we're 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 have, we have a lot of fun because we're in this drive time slot now out here in Tampa. So, and well, I yeah. and I know you're all sitting in traffic because I said to Jimmy today, Jesus, Florida's worse than Jersey in California. Well, that was 11:30 in the morning. We were sitting in traffic on the four. Yeah, I think the big thing once we get the season started, when we get closer to, because the protocols in spring training are tough. You know, yeah. this is first of all shortened spring training. Uh, you know, they're only playing 15 games. The, the players need to get all this extra work in and all these other things outside of on the field. And so they're not as available as they they have been in the past. And I'm going to work the next couple of weeks, Tommy, to try to get a few, just at least radio interviews, because we're not you know, we're not able to go out to the fields as much as we were before to do on-field interviews. Yeah, so, they really put some restrictions yeah. out there on everybody. So, See, when you ask, what is that saying? Ask and you shall receive. I think we got a caller on the line. We do. We have a caller on the line. HD from Tampa is on the line. HD. Hi, HD. Hey, guys. Um, first show, huh? First show. Um, yeah, looking we, forward we, to we, a, a lot of shows. We were on another network, and we made our way over. They brought us over here because they, they wanted to move us on up. Move, that's right. Moving on up. Okay. Well, let me, let me cut to the chase. Um, you know, golf is wonderful and all. But, uh, hey, uh, let's talk about something that would, uh, you know, uh, enhance the region, the Tampa Bay region, and um, jobs for people, and uh, just an idea that is long time overdue, and that is an NBA team in Ah. downtown Tampa. You know, Tampa Bay Area is the 12th largest market in the United States, guys. They've never had an NBA team. I mean, there's there's all kinds of smaller cities, Buffalo, Cincinnati, St. Louis, Kansas City, Oklahoma City is just small as hell, uh, you know, demographic wise, uh, et cetera. And uh, the NBA is uh, probably going to give another team very soon to Seattle. Um, this, of course, the Sonics were in Seattle. They moved to Oklahoma City. Right. And it looks like uh, Las Vegas has the inside track on the other one. Well, you're right. You know, back home we got Brooklyn and the, the, and the Knicks within a few miles of each other. So do you think this area can handle that? Well, yes, I do. Because uh, it's uh, basketball is played in snowbird season, and, you know, they come out to support their fans. I mean, Look at hockey, guys. Come on. Uh, basketball is 500 times more, uh, more uh, let's see, popular than hockey. Everybody's got a pair of kicks, and everybody's played basketball you know, in our life. Uh, anybody that wasn't overly rotund. But the bottom line is it's way more valuable uh, a commodity. Well, in HD. Situation, I looked this up on Forbes, okay? The most valuable property in the NBA is the New York Knickerbockers. Yep. $5 billion. No, so, uh, HD. Anyway, that's, that's to be. Uh, you could assume that, okay? And then the Lakers, the Celtics, and uh, the San Francisco uh, Warriors. HD, uh, we're, we're, Warriors. we're going on a hard the break, least, but don't be a stranger. HD. Mark is a, yep. Hey, listen, we're getting ready to go to a break real quick. I hate to cut you off, but 
let's but keep listening to us, and we'll we'll bring this up as a segment, and we'll push for Tampa to get a bad basketball team. Well, you gotta get Los Angeles. Here's Dan Byer. The Atlanta Falcons have traded quarterback Matt Ryan to the Indianapolis Colts. Ryan, who spent his entire career in Atlanta, now goes to Indy for a third-round pick. The Falcons will have more than $40.5 million of dead cap space on their cap for 2022, but by trading Ryan to Indianapolis, it cleared about $9 million in cap space. The Falcons made quick work then by signing Marcus Mariota to a reported two-year deal. Reports had stated Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield preferred to be traded to the Colts, but the Cleveland Plain dealer said Cleveland never got into deep talks with Indy about a trade. Patriots signed tackle Trent Brown to a two-year deal, and Jameis Winston back in New Orleans at a two-year deal worth a reported $28 million. Portland Trailblazers say that guard Damian Lillard will not return this season following ab surgery. The Athletics' is Zion Williamson's not going to play for the Pelicans this year. LSU is named Murray State head coach Matt McMahon as their new head coach. This is the Big 8. Sports, news, information, and entertainment. 820 WWBA. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Lang, host of popular talk show, Ask the Doctor. I have researched and developed several nutritional products to keep you healthy and happy. Are you overweight? Be honest. Life can be challenging and sometimes quite miserable when you're overweight. Losing weight will make you feel better, look better, and make you much healthier. However, this can be quite difficult. I have developed a system called Fortify Healthy Weight Loss Bundle. This is a combination of 16 organic superfoods, enzymes, probiotics, and grass-fed whey protein. When used as a meal replacement once a day this is the answer to a healthy weight loss simply mix the superfood with the protein in a shaker and drink as one of your meals daily then take the enzymes and probiotics with other meals and voila you're off to losing weight go to fortify.com that's f-o-r-t-i-f E-Y-E. Remember the E-Y-E in Fortify. This healthy weight loss bundle is already discounted for your convenience. I am Dr. Lang, and I am helping keep America fit and healthy during this time of precautionary change. This message is sponsored by the Florida Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program, the Florida Association of Broadcasters, and this radio station. My name is Deborah. I serve as a district manager for the Florida Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program. I am passionate about helping others and advocating to protect the quality of life and the rights for those who many times cannot help themselves. You can make a difference in someone's life today. Visit us at ombudsman.myflorida.com to learn more. Sports, information, entertainment. This is the real world. AM 820, 96.7 FM Tampa, 98.3 FM Pinellas. Tampa Bay's home for Bubba the Love Sponge. Morning, 6 to 10. Big 8. The Big 8. A portion of the upcoming broadcast is brought to you in part by the law firm of Catania and Catania. Award-winning personal injury auto and motorcycle accident attorneys. Serving Tampa Bay families for over 28 years. Offices Tampa, not attorney spokesman. It's time to get back to the show. Hello. The King and the Cop continues with Tommy, Jimmy, and Robin. Welcome back to the King and the Cop. Hey, Robin, um, you raised two Met fans. Still no call from Joe. This is my point. There's no Met fans. Step up, you Met fans. I know we're out in Tampa, and we're getting a lot of action back in New York and New Jersey. Call us. That's why you can't raise you know, a kid I have a, a Met I have fan. a brick at City Field. You know that, right? You and everybody else that donated five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nice. I'm getting yelled at by our uh, engineer saying I'm a Met fan. Come on, well, Matt. You're not a Met fan. Are they're you out there, Tommy. They're no, out there. I, I, I am actually a Met fan. Come on. Grew up on Long Island. I'm a Met fan. Yeah, no choice. You're, that means you're a Jet fan and no not wonder you Islander. Got the, no wonder you got the number wrong. Yeah, the Jets and Islander. <laughs> exactly right. That's my yeah, point. Yeah. Tommy's right. I'm a Jet. I'm a Jet Mets Islanders fan. Yeah. Oh, you, Did you move yet? Yeah, I mean, you're here now. Now what do you do? I <laughs> thought I heard you Jets were a big Jets Yankee Islanders fan. I'm still my team, but my secondary team to the Rays, the Lightning, and by default, the Bucks. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, I got I got to... I, I, I'm trying to get the feel out here in Tampa, and Robin and I went to the hockey game the other night, and i got to tell you something. There's nothing like the garden. Every time I say the garden, my wife sang at the garden. Remember, Jimmy? I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was there. But, there, but, Rob, that was exciting the other night. That was that was pretty cool. I thought so. And, yeah. Tommy, tell everyone what I said. Basketball doesn't play here? Basketball doesn't play here, and I said like the Prue Center back in the brick city of North New Jersey. We lost the Nets, and, and we only have the New Jersey Devils who are – Currently in last place, which is another subject. I just felt but like, what else? That, that stadium is... Jersey Boys yeah. coming here April 15th. 
John Bon Jovi. No, know, they didn't even pay me to say that. I mean, he's coming nice. here. Nice. Yeah. Maybe a basketball team should be there. Well, good, Robin. HD's point. Uh, but you know, I'm gonna it's be. Just, it's there's territorial issues with that, and I don't know oh, that okay. the politicians and uh, NBA. Although he may, you know, the Knicks and. Well, Nets, but I, but there's a couple other teams. You know, look at the Lakers. What if we started one? The Lakers, and, yeah, let's start one. The Lakers was, and the Clippers have, um, you I, know, I, playing the same arena, so it's not right. it's not unusual. I, but I was going to say too that maybe there's a little bit of fear from the NBA because of the way that they draw a Major League Baseball games you know, in Tampa. I, it's funny you said that. So, so today I'm waiting for my car to come get you, right? And yeah. the, um, the bell captain says at the hotel, he said, um, "I said I got to ask you a question." I went to the Hockey game the other night, which is a few blocks away. I said it was exciting. I don't know. It was packed, 16,000. I don't know how many they fit. You can't fit there. I said, I go to a Buccaneers football game. You can't get a seat, right? I go to a Rays baseball game. There's nobody there. You know what he told me? He said that they would like, people like to go and have a couple of drinks, which we also noticed, which is okay as long as you're not driving. But that, and I don't. And this is not fair. And, and maybe somebody could straighten me out. Maybe Tampa, and 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 because um, I'm I'm not going against this because I'm a big believer. People don't want to drive there. They don't want to drive. They're afraid to well, drive and, home. And we heard that the Ubers are not a, a, Ubers available are, in that area very often. It, 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 often because yeah. of COVID and other things. But I but, also uh, think Jimmy, too. you tell me, but not to cut you off. But the Rays were never drawn. Yeah. No. And, and I do think, and, and, and as a player. As a player, I will tell you, I would not want to go there as a fan just because the stadium, even you have all these new indoor stadiums. You got to remember, right. this stadium was built in the old days, like the Metrodome, like some of the other indoor stadiums that you really didn't want to, you, as a player, you didn't really want to play in it, much less be a fan and sit there. I heard it's dark. To it's hit. dark. The players it's, don't like to it, hit. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's. It's different. Like I go to some of these stadiums now, like Houston and some Arizona, the indoor stadiums, and there's some liveliness there. There, it, it's open. It's it, you feel like you're outdoors, even though you're yeah. indoors. At Tampa, you feel like you're in a box. Well, I know Ebor's trying. They they want baseball. I think more than a basketball team. Yeah. But um, I don't know. You know, the, you, it, politicians get in the way, and and um, it'll be interesting to see. But it'll it, be and, and you know, and, and good for the manager, uh, Skipper Cash. They're winning. They win. Yes. And um, still, you would think when they're winning late in the season, somebody would come out and support them. But uh, we'll go out. We but, look forward to going out and seeing them. But um, but we have a new thing to do now. And since we are a Tampa radio station or radio show, we now have to figure out why is it that they won't allow basketball. Yeah, we're gonna or have. They're to, not considering basketball. I think we can get that answer, but because um, I'm sure HD would love for us to be able to figure, finally give that answer to them. Well, the Orlando Magic have been owned by a family for a very long time, and uh, yeah. Sometimes there's rumors that they're on the block. I don't know, but um, it's interesting. You know, down the Marlins, um, you know, there's another team you thought would have done great in attendance and the great Hall of Famer Derek Jeter there, and he just left. So I'm not sure, Jimmy. You know, you realize after you get out of the game as a professional player, it really is a business. Oh, it is, 100%. And I, I can tell you, as somebody who's considered moving to Nashville, because I love Nashville, you know, there's talks there about them getting a baseball team in the next two years, if Seattle leaves or if Tampa does, you know, if they, the Tampa leaves, that that's where Nashville and Las Vegas and I think it's Charlotte are the top three destinations for new teams or teams that want to leave the cities that they're in currently, um, and I think that'll be interesting. Uh, but but you, you when you look at Areas like that, they, they're they're saying the same thing in Nashville that the, that he just HD just said, hey, hockey did great here. Yeah, you know, we have our Tennessee Titans are doing great yep. here. Why can't we have a baseball team? Why can't they come here? Because we've proven that our sports are good. The question is, is again, we're not the people that do the the, the de demographics, or we're not the people that do all of the surveys that say if we brought. Baseball or basketball, which, which would you like better to all the people in right. the surrounding area? And down here, if you remember, just recently, I don't know if it's dead now, but they were talking about doing a half season in Montreal. Yeah. The Rays were. Yeah. And, I mean, well, what kind of fan base are you going to get then? I mean, I know Montreal starving for baseball again, but when you had them, you didn't support them. So, I don't know. And we got great friends that are – I mean, Tim Raines is a legendary expo. Um, we got our other friend, Mike Torres, who played for the expos. He's going up there for Fan Fest next week. You know, he's living down here in St. Petersburg. And um, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know what the answer is. But, you know, the other thing is these owners are so wealthy now, so wealthy, they could take a chance. They're building their own stadiums. 
So I, I don't know if these cities want to take on the tax. I don't know if they want to build them anymore. They're making these owners build them, and people are stepping up. Uh, give us a call, 727-518-0820. Uh, Big Joe, still nothing. Met fans out there from New Jersey, New York, give me a call. I'm still waiting. Uh, but uh, we want to give you your opportunity. Yeah, I mean, you got a you you got Facebook uh, Live going, you got YouTube going. Let's go. You, we're representing New York too, even though we're in Tampa. And by the way, well, Joe is a we, friend of ours, honey, and yes. he know, is, uh, huh? just texted me to tell me that he will call as soon as he can, but he's tied up right this second. Yeah. Okay. Typical okay. Met fan, but I love Joe. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and you got to realize too, Tommy, we are in South Florida, not South Florida, but yeah, I guess it's still considered South Florida, but it's the West Coast of, of Florida, and uh, you know anything, anything north, or, I mean anything south of Gainesville is pretty much New York South. Yeah, well, I learned last night or over the weekend that, and by the way, the, the the Lightning fans outweighed the Ranger fans. There were a lot of Ranger fans. Here oh yeah, that came down. Go Rangers! They, they were in the hotel, and I'm going to tell you what. And you notice when you go to a Yankee a Rays game down here, they outweigh the Rays fans, the Yankee fans. Everybody retires and comes down. I'm ready. I'm so ready to come down here. It's 85 <laughs> today with a cool breeze, right, Jimmy? It was beautiful. It's, we we know, walked to the studio. That's when, right. We walked. When I uh, when I was leaving California, which of course we have no humidity, right. um, we were leave. I was leaving, and I was looking at the temperatures, and I just said to my wife, I said to Michelle, I go, "Oh my God, I hope to God it's not humid there yet." And she's like, "What are you talking about? It's only March." I go, "Babe, it's Florida. Yeah, you just never know. You and, never know. You know, it's 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 one of those things that, uh, you know, it it is it." <laughs> This time of year, you know, January, February, March. All right, March. California guy. We're getting another California ah! guy coming on. If I got to hear about the weather in San Diego, that's the first thing that's going to be out of Mark Skill's mouth today. <laughs> I don't know that there was more. There isn't there, anything more beautiful. Than no, California. there's no. There's nothing yeah, funny. if when you're talking about weather, anything right. else? When you got to pay taxes yeah. and you got to pay for everything else, and then, uh, I don't know. Yeah, fl flip a coin and everything. You got some else. great politicians out there too. <laughs> oh my God! Can Nancy <laughs> Pelosi retire, please? Congresswoman, uh, I respect you. Get out of the way for somebody else. For yeah, you sake. started your job with $2 million and now you're worth $350 million, so just go home, would yeah, you? Go home and eat your ice cream. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, oh. Robin, how's Fitz doing? He's sleeping outside the door. He's our golden retriever. I think he drank some caffeine before I heard him barking. He, uh, he better not bark when we're on the air. Well, I don't know what to tell you. He was jumping all over me. He was so happy. I'm sure. Did you get his brother or sister yet? Not yet. I'm going to surprise you. Yeah, that's going to be. I'm not getting it. I decided I can't do it. I yeah, can't do it. Thank God. Yeah, because so. I, I, I'm the one left doing it. Oh, here we go. All right, next subject. I, I mean, uh, where is Skills? Where's Vicky? Skills. Vicky, Vicky, yeah. Vic, Vicky's in the Cayman Islands. <laughs> I asked her to come on at the op our opener. Vicky Ziegler, our great counselor and partner from a law firm in New Jersey, and I asked her to come on. She said, you got to come where I'm at. I'm in the Cayman Islands. You and Robin, oh, thanks, Vicky. All right, I'll see you when you get back. <laughs> We're going to have Jen Groover on hopefully later in the week. She's another... Woman entrepreneur that we love. I think we're going to have to do a few more shows for 820 before we can suggest that we do a remote from Cayman Islands. Yeah, I think, we, <laughs> I think they'll pay for it. They're building a new studio. I mean, you know, Robin and I talked about it. We think they got the new studio just for us because we flatter ourselves so much. Yeah. You know. if we we're can, moving if, on up. We're moving yeah. on up. Moving on up. We're moving on up. We're looking forward to it. So, Bruce, uh, if you're listening out there, the owner of the great 820 um we're having a blast on our first day, and we delivered to you, buddy. We had our Hall of Fame friend on, Wade Boggs, and that was great. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to a big week. we got a couple other surprises this week that we'll be announcing. Get it out there on social media so everybody knows what we're doing. And uh, yeah, yeah, remember, you can go to the real Jay Layritz, which is my Twitter. Right. All right, and, and uh, ask questions, uh, suggest people that you want to hear from, you know, even though we talk about we're not real big TikTok people, I go on TikTok quite a bit. Not you don't have any idea how to do TikTok. I have love. I, yeah, I'm trying to learn because I've been told that if you're going to be back in the media now, that you need to have some type of presence on TikTok. Not so me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to come up with something catchy that we can start doing that and, and uh, maybe get a few followers from there. I do not want to wind up on Saturday Night Live and have a skit of... <laughs> I couldn't, even, I couldn't even work the new phone I got yesterday. I had to hand it over to Adam before the show. I love yeah. TikTok. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Yeah, it's... You see this book? We're on Twitter, too. Uh, King and the Cop. Yep, the King and the Cop. And um, 
Instagram and Facebook. So um, we need some, um, you know, some more communication with the audience and uh, we will deliver. Listen, and, if, and, and I want to say this to Joe, the Met fan. I want you to go and buy, actually, we're going to autograph a copy and send it to you. Catch and Heat, Jimmy Layritz's book. Yes. Because you've been Tommy, catch- you could just give it to him. He's our friend. That's what we said. We'll, we'll get him. We're going to sign one and give gonna, it to him. Give him a sign one, but I was getting to a point. Oh. <laughs> You, you, you're, you're going to need it. You're a Met fan. I'm going to let you vicariously live through a champion. We're going to sign this book and get it to you, buddy. Yeah, the other thing, you can go to jimlayritz.com, which is my website, and you can... Uh, I don't know, by the way, Jimmy, thing. if there's a nicer guy than Joe out, I'm just picking on him because he's a Met fan. I didn't know that, so, you know. He I'm said gonna, thank you. I'm going to convert him. Yes, yes. I'm going to convert him. I don't know, though. It's going to be tough. I'm telling you. I got this feeling about the Mets. I think that, that I think it's going to finally get back to the point where... In New York, I mean, you know this is better than anybody. When both teams are doing well, when both teams are playing well, the city is so much more vibrant. Nothing better than the subway series. And right now, the the city of New York, we need both of our teams to be good so we can get away from all the other negative crap that has happened in the last two years and, and build something positive again. And let's go Yankees, let's go Mets. And if you play each other, I'm still rooting for the Yankees. I, I can't agree with you more. Uh, we'll be back from a break and hopefully we'll have Mark Skills and uh, Mark Fleming on when we get back. Some law firms advertise that they are the largest. In law, largest is not always best. In fact, your case could get lost in the shuffle with one of those very large law firms. Catania Catania are family owned. They are Tampa Bay's attorneys representing clients who have experienced auto and motorcycle accidents. Your case will need a local attorney to get a settlement in your favor. Catania and Catania serving Tampa Bay families for over 28 years. Referrals on request. Get the local law firm to represent you. They don't get paid if you don't get paid. Catania and Catania, putting families first. Car accident, motorcycle accident, call the local attorneys today. Catania and Catania, offices Tampa. Not attorney spokesperson. Have you ever thought you'd like to buy and sell houses but didn't know how or where to get the money? My name is Ron Legrand, and over the past 40 years, I've bought over 3,000 houses without using my money or credit and taught thousands to do the same. Today, even in a virtual environment, we buy nice houses and nice neighborhoods using no banks, realtors, contractors, or other costly entanglements, and build huge cash flow and wealth without the hassle of tenants, all without credit and little or no money. You don't need a license or experience, and I'll show you exactly how it's done. Text RON to 99799 and I'll send you my free training. I promise I'll change the way you think about real estate and open the door to a new lifestyle that doesn't involve risk or rehabs and can quickly replace your current income. Text RON to 99799 and let me show you how to take your life back and build cash flow and wealth from your home. That's RON to 99799. Again, text RON to 99799. If you have $2,000 or more in credit card debt, then listen up. We can reduce or eliminate your interest rates, cut your monthly payment up to 50%, and stop all late fees. Our company has been helping good people just like you get out of debt for over 30 years. Don't get stressed out. If you have $2,000 or more in credit card debt and medical bills, we can show you a way to reduce all of your bills to one lower monthly payment that you can afford. So again, if you have $2,000 or more in credit card debt and medical bills you can't afford, make this free call today and learn how you can finally get out of debt. 
Call now for your free consultation. 800 632 1206 our guests are going to run a couple minutes late. Uh, you know, Jimmy, real quick, I got to ask you a question. Um, you in the pool? March yes. Madness? Yeah, you know, March Madness, of course, Kentucky killed me because they lost. And that was, you know, I went with them a Who'd lot. Who did they lose to? Uh, some team from New Jersey. I, yeah, I don't okay. remember. Just want to make sure. Say Saint, Saint somebody. I don't I don't remember. Anyway, San Saint, Pietro. There you go. Um, yeah, you know, it's one of those things I'm in the pool that I'm in. I'm with uh, 20 different guys. And uh, right now I'm in second place, one point behind. Wow. And if Gonzaga wins, I end up, I think, winning the thing because he took Ari- the guy that's right ahead of me is, is took Arizona to win the whole thing. So Nice. You, you, uh, My friend told me that 96% of all brackets were, they were out of the running yes. after that, that win. 96%. That's crazy. Yep. Crazy. Love when Jersey screws everything up for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's my day. Well, it's one thing to pick them over Kentucky, but then to have the, you know yeah they come back. Then they're going to play Murray State, and you're going okay. Murray State's really good. They're they're going to beat us, right. and then they beat Murray State, and then yeah. that, you know, now you're like going, well maybe that's right. Maybe they can beat Purdue. Maybe they can. Maybe there there's a, there's a chance here for them. It's but, like uh, Notre Dame. They say there's an inter- intervention sometimes that they shouldn't win, but they do. Maybe good old St. Peter. Working his magic, I don't know. Yeah, we have to find out at the... Uh, I, You know, I always wanted to ask you this question. I never did. I'm bouncing around from March Madness to a couple different sports. But when the Dodgers won the World Series during the COVID virus, which was awful, and they only played like 62 games, Yep. do you consider them really World Series champions? No. Right. No. I agree. That was just basically, to me, that was a throw-in exhibition season for the fans. Right. Do you even yeah. wear that ring, or yeah. could you even... Be proud of that. I mean, a player deep down inside has got to feel like, come on, that's not real. Yeah. yeah I don't, you know, listen, I, that's curious. You know what? That's a good question when we get one of these guys on. Yeah. Well, they're going to say yes. Yeah, of course they are. Of course guys, they are. guess what I just found out? I give up. I am i don't. I bet it doesn't have to do with the Dodgers winning the World Series. No. <laughs> no, it does not. Exactly right. Uh, uh, it has to do with St. Peter's. Go okay. ahead, Delory. St. Peter's. So St. Peter is the patron saint of shipbuilders, fishermen, and here's a little play on words. He built the ark, didn't he? Net makers. Ooh. Oh. Ooh, good job, oh, Robin. Good, Robin. Good. No, but like the basketball net. Yeah, right? yeah no, uh, we, we get, get it. it. No, we, we get, get it. it. You know, yeah. we didn't we didn't say the phone number <laughs> wrong. We get it here. <laughs> you know, take it easy. We got it. No, that's Isn't good that information. Cool? That's that is good. good information. Net makers. I like wow. that. Wow. All right. We, wow. We need to call Shaq up and give him a little bit of that information. A little he can, history? He might want to use that on the show. I wonder, I think LSU hired a new coach today. I wonder how the big fellow feels about that. I mean, they have more changeover in LSU with their coaches. So yeah. we, 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 we'll have to reach out, you know, and get the real information. Then he can also tell us about the Orlando Magic, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Great story. I think only two. Uh, oh. He joked one time that two people were on the cover of Time Magazine. He was one and Mickey Mouse was the other. <laughs> And we're getting the basketball pretty soon that we're going to have to start talking playoffs and we'll start, you know, talking. And I'm going to be so glad to be talking about basketball this year, the NBA finals and the playoffs, and not have to mention LeBron James. Wow. See, yeah. that is. Uh, see, I'm so happy. You know, <laughs> that begs the question. So many people feel like that. Here's one of the greatest basketball players ever. Arguably, people argue he's the best. Yep. But some people feel. They have to root against him because he rubs them the wrong way. And I don't know. Hi, guys. What's the problem? I, I don't know. I don't know, well, you know either. What? I you, you, you know what I could say? Because the only other guy that I have that I, of my time of being a basketball fan, yeah. is a guy like Michael Jordan. Right. And. But he was kind of the same way. He wasn't, though. He wasn't he, approachable. He, he was, he, again, but he wasn't, he didn't make basketball about politics. Right. And well, that's, 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 that's the this. only thing that I think. That's the mistake that LeBron made. You know, made. let me say something about and, it. No, wait, let go me ahead, finish. go ahead. You're right. But Michael Jordan, 
was a cocky individual, yes. He wasn't the greatest as far as – but he never, ever made himself bigger than the sport. And it, why he was playing. Right. Why he was playing. He might have after he started to retire and, you know, all these – because as you're a player, when you retire, you, you still miss all that – all right. That notoriety. But I think Michael Jordan was so much different in a way. And he was also played during a time when there wasn't so much political unrest and everything else that was going on. Um, but at the same time, I, I just, I, I, I love, and, and my son, Austin, you met Austin. Yeah, you, you know course. Austin. His dog is named LeBron. I mean, that's how much <laughs> he loves the Lakers. Okay. Really? His dog, he's got a little pug. That, that he named LeBron and it's got the Lakers, you know, sweater and the whole thing. So it's not that I don't like dislike LeBron as far as overall, so it's that I don't respect his ability and what he has meant to the game and how great he's been. It's just there's certain times that you put yourself in positions that you have the ability to make better. And I think some of the decisions he made, they. Uh, I want to hold this better. subject for thirty seconds, but uh, back to the engineers, Matt. I'm. Being told our guests are in the waiting room. I have oh. no idea what that means, but if they're that means you know, I haven't seen anybody calling on the line yet. There's nothing there. I think they're trying to zoom in. I don't know if that's working, but um, but well, I want to. Unfortunately, that's not on my end. Yeah, uh, I want to ask you something, Jimmy. What who was more controversial than a, 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 the greatest Muhammad Ali? And I remember not liking him as a kid, but then as I became an adult. What this man stood for, so I, I don't know. I, I, give, well, and it's hard I, I, give, because I give LeBron a, a minute because yeah. I think he's building schools. He's well, doing so much for I, charities, again, and you again, know, so there I don't, is so much that. Again, here's another guy too that who has raised a family. He's been a great father. I'm not again. I'm not saying, you know, I, I there, there's a part of me that really, really likes LeBron right. James, but there's also a part of me that believes in karma. Yeah, and I don't like that he's bounced around and he do uh, this hired guns now to win these championships. That, you know, that's more my point. Yeah, than that else. I agree with you. Know, you. Is, is you, when you where's be, he going next year? That's a good question. Probably back to Cleveland so he can retire at Cavalier. Yeah, but yeah. Um, no, I mean, again, you know, there's there's much more there's there's more things to like about LeBron than to, to not like, and it's outside of the sport. It's outside of basketball because he has been a great ambassador, uh, give back. You know, th this is not a guy that you would say, oh, he's a selfish uh, person off the court or in his right. sport. You know? Yeah, I mean, he's because walked the walk off he, the court. He has for done sure. so much. And I, j I remember meeting him at 18 years old at Jay Z's 4040 Club in New York. I remember 4040. Yep. Yeah. And I remember meeting him for the first time when he was just coming out of high school. And I think it might have been his first year in the league. And just to see him, like, appreciate what he was getting. He's a physical what, what, specimen, yeah. though, isn't he? I mean, and, oh, my gosh. He's, he you know, looks like a statue. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those things when you get to the Jordan, you know, yep. LeBron debates. Um, you know, it, it, LeBron's a different athlete. Right. Yeah, it's a completely different athlete, and you have to you have to respect that. And that's that was my whole point. It, it wasn't so much all the other things. It's just some of the, one a couple of decisions, and we know how bad decisions can get us in trouble. So yeah, but you know, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's like when they say the president. Sometimes the presidents are more popular after they leave office. Uh, maybe LeBron, it'll be the same way for him. Oh, I think There's so. There's so much yeah. uh, I, difference of opinion on him. It really is. He's, it's surprising. He's going to have a platform once he retires uh, to do to, to, to make a lot of difference. And, and that school yeah. is a huge part of it. I mean, you can't, it's one of those things I always said. If there, was, if there was one person that I could change their life through what I did in sports, then I feel like I've accomplished something. And I think LeBron can say that. 10 million times over. Yeah, he's changing people's lives. You know, no he, doubt about he's, that. He's a big part of that. And that's why I always say to people, listen, I, I give my opinion on some things, but it's not that I don't like the person. I don't like – there are certain things that they Yeah, do. it's the way you're reading it. Exactly, the, the way you read yeah. it. So, But um, – Well, I, I don't – you know, listen, I know you as an athlete, you don't root for anybody to fail in life. Never. But, but it's, it's, it's – um, it's tough to, to – people, people really do go after them, but then there's – um. You know, that's politics, too. I mean, it's of just course. simple. You know, it, it, it isn't about, like, a rivalry that people don't like him because he's never stayed with 
the same team. So uh, they don't like that he's just goes around and shops himself and takes his buddies to the best team. And, yeah, that's that's tough. I I agree with you. And that was my point. My point when he came to L.A. was like, I'm going to build this empire. And It's like, wait a minute, you're not building this. You're not a real Laker, buddy. The Lakers are building the Lakers. That's right. And you're just a part of that. And I think that's what was missing. And I think that's kind of like when you see something like this happen, that they don't make the playoffs with the the amount of guys that they have. It's kind of like the people – now I know what it's like to be against the Yankees in the late 90s. Those Mets hate it, yeah. <laughs> Mets hate it, yeah. Those people didn't like it. But you know one thing kept, about yeah. your owner, the great late George Steinbrenner, was the money he made he put back into the team. People thought it was being obnoxious and spending money, but right. he was doing it for his fans. He didn't care what the other fans thought. Yeah. He cared what the Yankee fans thought. And you know, that was fun. But he got a bad rap, too, because there was a lot of um, homegrown boys there that came up through the system, like yourself, you know. So, um I don't know. There's somewhere somewhere in the middle, I guess, again. But it, it all falls to um, – it's a business. Yes. It's a business at the end of the day. And um, we learned that with our, our friend um, and golfer Phil Mickelson. Um, opened up his mouth about something getting in a different league. And you haven't heard from him since in the last three or four weeks. You know, it's it's a business. Yeah. And, you know, his people are saying go quiet for a while. And, again, my point. If you when know, you think you're bigger than the game. That's right. And that's what happened You're going to be humbled. Yeah. Who you, who you, are you? What do you think? I mean, since we're a Yankee station out here down in Tampa, I'm probably going to get uh, people mad at me for saying that. But uh, 820 uh, covers the Yankees. Are you? You think we're we're we? I'm going to say we got a shot to win the division this year. Or what? I mean, everybody makes the playoffs now, which well, is another different subject. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that there's a doubt that they're going to be in the running for the playoffs, uh, especially now with. You know, ten teams going to be going to the playoffs. So right. I think they can definitely make that. They made it you know, before. Again, the the big question is like it is the last since two thousand nine. Can they get just get to the World Series, much less win it? But like, can right. they get back to the World Series, and and maybe have an opportunity to win it? And they have not done that uh, since two thousand nine. So do you, do you think the Steinbrenners and Cashman, or the Steinbrenners and not Cashman? Did not sign Correa to play shortstop, not because Volpe's coming up, but, but because, you know, of the antics that the Astros pulled a couple of years ago and there's Yankees are still sore about it. What, what's your thought on that? Do you pass on a dominant player like that, shortstop? Maybe, probably, it's going to go in the Hall of Fame. I, I actually think that this tells you how much they truly believe in this Volpe. You know, he made his spring training debut today. I haven't seen the box score yet. I don't know what he did today, but he made his spring training debut today. And... Um, you know, I do know, I actually know his parents. Um, they, they're friends of some fr- friends of mine in Long Island. And I remember when the Yankees drafted him, um, they they talked like, our, you know. So proud. This is the next coming of Derek Jeter. Yeah, that's tough and when people do that. They remember, it used to be the next coming of Mickey Mantle. Well, How many people did that ruin? Well, exactly, exactly. And I don't, I've seen the kid play, um, you know, and I, I saw as the game started today, I was watching a little bit of it. Um, but the bottom line for me was that they uh, they they didn't make these deals. You would, you know the Yankees yeah. have the money. It's not like they don't have it. Exactly. You had Story. You had Correa. You had all these other guys that were available. And I really think that talks about how much they truly feel that this kid is going to be ready in the next year or two. And that's why they have the stopgap that they brought in uh, the kid from Minnesota. And I think that's you know that's where. Uh, the sign is that says, okay, we, we truly believe in this kid. And I think there's two ways it can go. It could be too much pressure on the kid, or the kid could be like, like myself, that I love, I love that kind of pressure, that he could say, look, at this is my opportunity. Like, be like Derek Jeter. Right. Hey, you get to step into this position, and if you do well, you can write your own ticket. Look what Derek did for 20 years. I always say, Tony Fernandez doesn't break his wrist. The Yankees That's right. don't have – the dynasty. Yeah, they're waiting yeah. a little longer with Jeter, maybe. Yeah. Hey, Robin, what hat are you wearing again? The Nork Bears, honey. And you know, speaking of the Nork Bears, speaking of the Yankees, their assistant. I took it hit- off. All right, but their assistant hitting coach this year, Jimmy, is Bam Bam Mullins, former yeah. Nork Bear, former Yankee, San Francisco Giants, three-time World, World Series three-time winner. World Series winner. So, um, good luck to Bam Bam. That's nice. Hopefully, we'll see him out there tomorrow or the next day. He's a good man. Spent a couple times on a golf course with him. Yeah, I was curious because I had seen that he had not signed with anybody in, after leaving San Francisco, and I uh, I know he's been doing a lot of stuff in his home city of Carousel. Yep. 
And uh, he's a good man. Yeah, and it's um, it's it's great to see him back. And of course, you know, we always say sometimes things come full circle, and truly. This has come full circle for Bam Bam. Yeah, he's yeah. back with the Yankees, and that's pretty cool. That's got to be, you know, I I I, think I hear it from you. I hear it from over and over from everybody, whether it's even Wade Boggs. I we should ask him the question. Nothing like putting on the pinstripes. Yeah, I know that'll upset a lot of people out there, but everybody that's ever wore that uniform says there's nothing like putting on those pinstripes. And yesterday when I went to the spring training game. They even carry themselves the right way during spring train. It's amazing. There they are in their pinstripes. They don't wear a different color shirt. You know, Steinbrenner, they're all, I know people hate it. They they can't have a beard. They can't have a mustache. They got to have their hair groomed. But, you know, there's something to be said for it. I like it. Listen, I think it's I, pretty cool. Again, a kid growing up with my father who worked for IBM. There you go. I totally understood it. My father, you know, that's the way we were raised. And then and I watched him go to work every day and, it was clean shaven, clean cut. Your hair couldn't yep. touch your collar, and you put on a blue jacket with a white shirt sure. and a red tie, and That's that exactly was the right. IBM look. Right. And again, the thing that was so great about it, like Steinbrenner, you worked for the company that you represented, not yourself. That's right. And so we're all going to look alike. We're going to look because we're not different. And you got to look good to play good. Yep. I, I used to say that. My father, we and had I'm roll sorry. call when we were twelve years old, Eddie, and I. We couldn't have any uh, hair on our. Ears. I can guarantee you this. If we get Josh Donaldson's wife on a show, right. she's going to say he's much better looking now than he was when he played. <laughs> he, he had the mohawk the last time I saw him. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The guy looks 20 years speaking, younger. Speaking of him, what, what do you think? You think, um, you know, he's getting up there, and not in age, in, but in the baseball years, he's up there. But, I mean, was MVP at one point. What do you think the value he's going to bring to the hot corner? I was a little surprised at that, to be honest with you. Yeah, you know, especially with, uh, you know, Gio Urshela being such a, not only a good Yankee player on the field, but he did so much in the community off the field. Yeah. And he was really, really involved. And I know him personally that that was a really disappointment for him more so than just leaving the baseball. It was leaving what he was starting to build in New York. But I think, you know, listen, Josh Donaldson is an upgrade no matter what because this guy can flat out hit. And he, and he loves the pressure. He loves to play in the pressure pack games, and I think he's going to do pretty well in New York if he can stay healthy. Yeah. Well, great opening day for the King and the Cop and Robin Delory, New Jersey's favorite girl. Um, it was great to have Wade Boggs on. What a pleasure and honor that was. And uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with the King and the Cop. Yep. Big 8, Radio 820, WWBA, Sports Talk Florida. Join us 4 to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. So much fun, guys. After 14 great. years in Atlanta, Matt Ryan has a new Good home. Good job, the guys. Falcons we'll talk to you tomorrow. The quarterback. Okay, right. pal. Thank you. Thank you. You got to give me if there's anything you want, guys. Can you stay on?